This is Monty in the Morning, the show Phoenix Magazine readers voted number one talk radio show in Arizona. Number one during your morning commute. Number one whenever news breaks during your day. And number one whenever and wherever you want to talk sports. Now it's time for Monty in the Morning. Hey, yo, man, how the heck are you? It is Thursday. Game day for BYU football against Utah State in Provo. 24 points. Nah, bro. We've got locks for you coming up in, I don't know, about 20 minutes on football at 50. Yeah. Football. Uh, It's good to have Thursday night football. I love the early game. Yeah. That means we get Papa Murphy's Pizza on Thursday Mm. instead of Friday. Let's Let's go. go. Let's go. No, no. No, do not tell me that pineapple doesn't belong on pizza. A little barbecue sauce, a little cookie dough on the smoker. Let's go, baby. And it's all brought to you by The Advocates, utahadvocates.com. Make sure that when you're in an accident, you get an advocate. You need somebody to fight for you. The advocates know it's not your fault that you were in an accident. Um, And you need somebody to fight for you. Have somebody that can help you get your life back in order, can get you back to work, can get you the money you deserve because those insurance companies are not here to help you, friends. That's why you need an advocate. UtahAdvocates.com. We'll start the show this morning with a little breaking news. Uh, We've been working on a story about the uh, Pac-12's negotiations with ESPN, and we had heard that they're over $100 million apart, and we were told uh, yesterday evening that they were far more than $100 million apart. In fact, that they are 50% apart on what the Pac-12 wants versus what ESPN is offering. In fact, uh, sources in the TV industry tell us that um, ESPN is not willing uh, to go beyond you know, their, their original offer of $800 million over five years. That's total over five years. Uh, meanwhile, the Pac-12 is asking for a minimum of $1.5 billion. $1.5 billion. Jake, and these sources have been right all along. If, yeah. in fact, this is where we are, I don't see any way the Pac-12 survives this. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I, I don't know where where the Pac-12 gets off thinking that they can command over a billion dollars for a distribution deal. I, I, I think that... You know, as I've been saying all along, when we talk about this this conversation and in this situation, I often feel like the Pac-12 just thinks that it can command whatever the hell it feels like commanding, and that's not how business works. Like whether we're talking about college football or Nancy's Bake Shop, you can't just do whatever you want. You're not just worth whatever you think you're worth. It's it's all about what someone's willing to pay you, and I think that. What, what is beyond me is that the Pac-12 seemingly doesn't realize that it's on its deathbed. The Pac-12 doesn't realize that, that this conference is in real, tangible danger of dying. Yeah. And they're negotiating like, yeah, we'll be fine. Well, nah, we'll be fine. It's fine. We don't need ESPN. Like, we're, our price is our price, and it, and it really just doesn't matter. And, and I think that, you know, to me— there has to be at some point a day that comes along where George Klyovkov and the people running the Pac-12 realize, hey, yeah, we're in serious trouble here. Like, we do need to take $800 million as opposed to $1.5 billion, You know? Like, so to me, that's what always stands out. If I'm ESPN, I don't move at all. I stick at my price. I stick at my offer. And if they don't like it, then it is what it is. And, and I don't know why... ESPN would have any flexibility in that. I just don't. Well, and this goes back to George Klyovkov piping off, uh, you know, uh, on the Wilner Canzano podcast in that hit piece on UCLA where he talked about how he's guaranteeing nobody's leaving and he's guaranteeing that the Big 12 isn't going to get Pac-12 members. And I think this, the bravado, the arrogance, the the lack of understanding uh, of who George Klyovkov's conference is and where they are is really damaging the conference right now because if you, let's say in best case scenario for the Pac-12 that you stick and stay with ESPN, that's $16 million per school per year and that's not a workable number. We I mean, clear on that? that's, it, it just is not. I mean, it's $16 million nobody's going to sign that grant of rights. Yeah, and, to and me, that's the other conversation. Yeah. It, like the schools even, 
accepting what you bring to the table. And so it's kind of, that's why it's just unbelievable to me that there's not there there has to be more at play if I'm George Klavkov in the Pac-12 than just the ESPN opportunity. I mean, we've heard all about how, you know, the Amazons of the world might be interested or like, you know, digital streaming, you know, platforms might be interested, you know, Amazon, Apple, like, you know, the Hulus, like there's, you know, there's obviously a ton of people or companies in that space. And I just think that at some point you have to, you have to make the right decision as far as your distribution deal is concerned. You're at $16 million dollars a year per school like you that's, like that that's like not it's, you know it's viable. just embarrassing it's not viable it doesn't work like it's not an option but, but again i want to play this george klavkov bite where he talked about the back of the envelope because listen to what he says about ucla's plight and listen to what he says about ucla uh joining the big 10. the fact of the envelope calculations on the negative impact on ucla expenses travel expenses and just expenses for coaches' salaries and other things just to get to the average Big Ten athletic budget. And, um, you know, we, we think that uh, the incremental money they're going to receive from the Big Ten media rights deal will be more than 100% offset by additional expenses. So you end up taking that money that you earn and it goes to airline and charter companies and coaches and administrators. It doesn't go to supporting the student-athletes. Well, that's all well and good. And hey, look, it may be more expensive to travel, but here's the reality of the situation. It's $16 million a season, which is what the Pac-12 is looking at um, with ESPN's latest offer, according to sources. And that that's the maximum. ESPN has told the Pac-12, this is where we are and we're not going over this number because I think ESPN realizes the Pac-12 has no leverage here. Yeah. And the Pac-12 is in real danger of going away because the other thing that, that you have to remember is the Big 12 has been very quiet. And a lot of people are wondering, well, you know, what is the new commissioner of the Big 12 doing? Why have we not gotten TV negotiation updates? Uh -huh. Because according to those same TV industry sources, the Big 12 is just slow, slow playing their TV negotiations because what hurry are they in when the Pac-12 has zero leverage? And the other side of this story is, what is the Big Ten doing? Because according to other sources, we're told that the Big Ten has handshake agreements with schools in the Pac-12. Is this the and that Apple TV has real interest in picking up third tier rights for the Big Ten. And the Big Ten, I think, would like to do that deal with Amazon. But I think Amazon has a lot of other opportunities. They're uh -huh. a lot more cost effective. If Apple TV swoops in and takes those rights for whatever figure the Big Ten is willing to take on those, I think that absolutely seals the deal on the Pac-12. It's over. Because at that point, you're not just getting USC and UCLA. What that allows the Big Ten to do is to go to Cal and Stanford, Washington and Oregon, and say, hey, join our conference, be the West Coast division of the Big Ten, have travel partners, lessen the impact on your student athletes, lessen the impact on your bottom line. And by the way, when we add Apple TV or Amazon's money, that puts now every member of the Big Ten at $100 million per, kick it, we'll flow. per season per, per school. That's game-changing, life-changing money for schools like UCLA who have an incredibly huge hole to dig out of financially. And right now, I look at a school like Cal who has huge debt on their stadium, who is not one on the field, who is not selling tickets, who's not selling merch. That's a huge windfall for a school that has no other opportunity to get to that windfall. And the other thing I would point to you is, what has the UC System Board of Regents done here? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. They have not made a ruling. They have not made a decision. And they haven't done that because they know what is financially viable is anything but the Pac-12. And it is far more viable for UCLA and, and UC Berkeley, Cal, to join the Big Ten. So to me, all of this adds up to say the Pac-12 is lying in its deathbed right now. It is on its deathbed, and George Klyovkov is absolutely the grim reaper of this conference. And that interview he did with Kanzano and Wilner is coming back to bite him square on his ass right now because, Jake, he can't back up what he said in that interview. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And I think that, that George is, is, again, a guy that wants to play the PR cycle. And I think that, you know, this, this, this concept of the Big Ten essentially just sitting here like a vulture waiting 
for you to, you know, fall over dead as far as your conference is concerned and then just swoop in and take everything is is real. I mean, it, it makes perfect sense because think about it. Whether we're talking about ESPN, the Big 12, the Big 10, you know, none of these people in this situation outside of the conference itself have to move on this. There's no, like the Big 10 is going to get paid either way. The Big 10 is already in uh, an incredibly strong position. They're, they're at a point where they're talking about third tier rights at this point. Like that's how good of a position the Big 10 is in. So so there, there's just no incentive for them to rush. They can wait you out. They can wait for you to 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 die in your pride because that's what I feel like is happening. George Klyovkov and that leadership team are are very prideful about where the conference is at. They have no ability to say, "Yeah, you know what? Yeah, we were wrong. We 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 overvalued our conference." And it's not to say the conference sucks, but with where we are right now, this is what we have to do: X, Y, and Z. If George were to come out and say that today, I think that would completely change the landscape of this entire conversation because then that shows people, yeah, he gets it. He understands. Now there's opportunity for for partnerships, and maybe the Pac-12 can exist, but they need to partner with another conference, and maybe those two teams come together. I, I don't know, but my point just is, is, that, is that not only is $16 million an embarrassing number just when you compare it to other conferences, no school is going to sign that. And, and there's just not a path forward. That's the problem. There's not an obvious path forward. And even if that path was difficult, but but if you did that thing, you'd be able to move forward, that doesn't even exist. So that's why, to us on the show, it looks like the pack is dying. The pack is running out of time. And and I don't know. You know, if you're Oregon, why would you stay in the pack? If you're any of these big-time schools. That's a great question. Why what, would you? What's the what? What is the incentive to be here, I, I I just think with the Big Ten, it's a matter of when they get a, a digital stream deal done. When that happens, I just don't see why they would stand still anymore. And it, it, I think the Pac-12 is well aware. It, you know, one of the things when, when we talk about this, we've wondered for months and months why George Klyovkov was being so brash and having so much bravado. And I think when when you have no other avenue to take, you simply just lie. And I think that's what, in my opinion, George Klavkov has done here. Yes. When he says, I guarantee no team in this conference is leaving for the Big 12. Congratulations, but that's bullshit. How can it be anything other than that? Yeah. And I think the damage that is done to this conference, and frankly, the damage that was done by Larry Scott to this conference, the injuries that he caused yes. are remarkable. And maybe the Pac-12 should call the advocates. If you've been injured in a car accident, even if it wasn't your fault, you still have to deal with the consequences like overdue medical bills, car repairs, and worse, insurance companies that try their hardest not to pay their fair share. No need to worry though. The advocates are here to help. See, Otherwise were, known as the Big Ten. See, they were... <laughs> The, 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 he did injure, you injured, damaged. I'm for real. You need a lawyer to, you know. I'm for real. The Monty Show presented by The Advocates. <laughs> UtahAdvocates.com. Come on, that was pretty good. Off to a raging start. Pretty good. A straight rage, on my. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, the, the, the thing that is really important, when you're in an accident, insurance companies are not on your side. Your insurance, their insurance, neither one is doing what's best for you. They're doing what's best for them. That's why you need an advocate. Get to utahadvocates.com. Talking about the breaking news this morning uh, that the Pac-12 is teetering on the verge of destruction, frankly, um, because ESPN is unwilling to go past the $800 million mark over a five-year period on TV rights for the Pac-12. And really, at that point, you're talking about the Pac-10. The other interesting part of this is that ESPN is unwilling to budge. They want a termination clause, a termination trigger, if you will, that if the conference shrinks during their their TV contract with the Pac-12, that they have the right to immediately terminate that deal. And the Pac-12 is saying, we're not going to do that. 
And I think it's smart negotiating. ESPN is the worldwide leader in sports for a reason. They understand their leverage here. The Pac-12 needs ESPN. ESPN does not need the Pac-12 because, again, totally. much like the Big 12, and this is why I say, oh, yeah, this is why. This is why I say that you have to understand the, the tact and the path that the Pac-12 the Pac-12 has taken here versus the path and the tact that the Big 12 has taken. And Jake, I think the Big 12 has handled this masterfully. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that the Big 12 understands who they are and in the position that that they are in, and in that position to me is is one of of sort of cleaning up whatever the Big 10 doesn't pick up, which which sounds bad, right? It sounds like oh well, they're just getting seconds basically. But to me, I actually think for the Big 12. It's a great position to be in because what essentially what you've done here is you said, okay, you know, we're adding we're adding BYU and a couple other schools here next year, and then we're gonna wait and see how this pack, you know, ten situation sort of plays out. And we know that Kevin Warren and the Big Ten are taking on, you know, USC and UCLA and likely gonna take on Oregon and a couple other schools in the pack. I think it's no doubt that it's Oregon and Washington. Cal and Stanford so, to add to USC and UCLA. So if you're if you're sitting there in the Big Twelve and you're watching this and you're in the know and you have the information, there's no incentive to to make any brash movement. You need to wait for this to play out yeah. and have some conversations again. And I always bring this up, but this is where Utah fans should be should be you know perking up a little bit because this is Utah's route out of the conference and into a better situation. So to me, if I'm the Big 12, yeah, I think I've handled this really well so far. I think I, I want to have conversations with you know San Diego State, Utah, all the usual suspects that we talk about going to the Big 12 and have everything kind of lined out. And then once the Big 10 finishes, I'm going to swoop in and do what I do. See, I think when you talk about the Big 12 expanding, Brett Yormark has handled this masterfully. He, yeah. He did that tour of the conference. They, they, you know, the news came out that the Big Twelve is opening negotiations early with its TV partners, Fox and ESPN. Right, and that's all you've heard, right? ESPN said, "Well, we're not negotiating early yet," and you haven't really heard anything since then because what I'm told has happened is the Big Twelve has simply slow played that, and they've gotten all of their ducks in a row, mm -hmm. and they've built relationships. I don't think there's any doubt that the Arizona schools. Colorado and Utah are the first four into the Big 12. Hey guys. And the more interesting angle here, and by the way, we'll get to BYU and Utah State in three minutes on Football at 50 presented by Papa Murphy's Pizza. But I think the, the more interesting angle here is what's going to happen with the Mountain West in San Diego State? Because I think San Diego State, from what I understand, has really rebuffed any invitation talk to the Big 12. And I think they've done that because they believe that the Mountain West is going to be in a better position once all this shakes out because what are the two schools in the back 12 that we haven't heard anything about? Oregon State and Washington State. And all of a sudden, if you add Oregon State and Washington State, you have significantly grown your footprint in the Mountain West. And one of the things I think is so interesting, when we talked about Craig Thompson stepping down as the commissioner of the Mountain West, uh -huh. what did I tell you then? The same thing I'm going to tell you now. Here's when the Mountain West grows. What I don't. I, just say? I don't think the Mountain West is going away. I think the Mountain West has a real home. Like all these people that talk about Boise State should be added to the Big Twelve. Absolutely not. The Boise State, with all due respect, is not the same program it was under Chris Peterson, and and has not been since. Yeah. And I think when you look at Boise State and you look at San Diego State, those become better football programs with the addition of Oregon State and Washington State. And I think you don't have to let the Apple Cup go away. You don't have to let, you know, the Holy War go away. These moves do not necessarily damage the regional rivalries. I think they actually enhance them. And I think when you look at where Boise is, I think Boise and Washington State is a natural rivalry. Territorially speaking, Pullman and Boise are not that far apart. Yeah. And I think when you look at Washington State and, you know, Washington – Oregon and Oregon State, Utah and BYU. I don't think those games have to go away. It's certainly for BYU and Utah. If you add Utah to the Big 12, which I think, again, since day one I've told you, I think that is absolutely done. 
I think Utah is joining the Big 12. I think it's the only move forward for them. I just think it makes sense. But it does. it's never made sense that Utah would join the Big 10. Yeah. It has never made sense. And this is also another Kliav caught talking point that the Big 12 and the Pac-12 will never merge. I think one of the things that that comment did is it damaged his ability to negotiate with ESPN because I don't think there's any doubt that the point of, of authority for ESPN would be getting the Big 12 and the Pac-12 to merge. Yeah, Bringing those two conferences together puts ESPN in a position of strength because ESPN has current rights deals with both of them, and it would be naturally, natural and easy for ESPN to take on those, those rights. But now Brett Yormark has puffed his chest out and said, hey, we're going into the West Coast footprint. And you have George Klyovkov puffing his chest out saying, no team in my conference is going to the Big 12. It makes perfect sense for the corner schools to join the Big 12 and for the Pac-12 now to die. And it's really unfortunate because what could have been will never be in the Pac-12. That's the really unfortunate part. What is always possible Every single day at 10 to the hour, every hour on this show is football at 50. Presented by Papa Murphy's Pizza. Make sure you use the promo code MONTY25, M-O-N-T-Y 25, MONTY25 to get 25% off your order of $25 or more. Tell me how to run my audio board. (laughs) I saw you flinch. Hey. Um, BYU, Utah State. Where's Chris Karn? I saw Chris Karn was the first one in this morning. Chris Karn apparently is in Las Vegas. Okay. Chris Karn says it's early in Vegas, boys. Go Cougs tonight. BYU was minus 25 and a half. Bruh, 25 and a half. It's 24 this morning, according to what we saw. BYU's a 25 Bro. and a half point favorite, depending on who you ask. Dude. Tonight over Utah State, Chris, put your money back in your pocket, dude, because you cannot believe that Utah State's going to score enough points. To make that possible, right? Okay, so let's talk about what that means. What do you think happens in this game? Does BYU win by by 25 and a half points in your opinion? I think that BYU's putting up 45 points in this game. That's what I think. I think that that they're going to come out really looking to press early. Like, I think, you know, Kalani, you know, wants to get off to a better start. Everyone knows they need to get yeah. off to a better start. So, to me, I think it's... It's it's coming out and dominating this team early, and I think that you know I I look at like the performance against USF where you had that big play with Puka early, something like that I think is what they're going to be looking for. So if that happens, I, I just don't see any reason why this team shouldn't put up like 45 points on Utah well, State. I mean, the question becomes, what does Utah State do offensively? Because they have been embarrassing. They have been inept. Well, and I think that's what people are counting on with this, with these huge lines. Like, 25 and a half points in Vegas definitely suggests turnovers by Utah State and extra possessions for BYU. Well, and don't so, forget one uh, Gunner Romney is going to play tonight. He will make his season debut for BYU. I mean, I think that's a huge impact. Yeah. They're not covering 25 points. I think they can cover 23, 24, because I see this 42, 17. That's really where I feel. What is that, 25 points? Yeah, I think I it feel is, like dude. I feel like that's where they're at. They're not covering 25 and a half. You want to take them to cover 23? 42, 17 is 25 points. And you want to take them to cover so 23? 45, you're 17 is 28, 28. points. So. You, I don't see any way that happens. I don't... They're, and look, Utah State has been bad, but with, with Gunner back on the field tonight, um, you look at the fact that it's a 24-point number. The con- the consensus pick um, is 24 points, but I look at what Utah State has done. Here's what we know about Utah State. They yeah. turned the ball over at an inordinate rate over the last three weeks. Yes. I think they've had 12 turnovers in three weeks. Yep. Um, you know that their defensive and offensive line play has not been good. Utah State's not going to get in the backfield and disrupt what you're trying to do. And let's be very honest. Jaron Hall has been arguably one of the the best passers in college football this year. I think they win 42-17. That's what it feels like to me. Because I think Jaron's going to have time. So you do like 25. I think 42-17 is where I go. If I'm a betting man, I I, I take Utah State to cover. If my money's going out the door... I'm putting on Utah State to get under the 24 points. Yeah. 
BYU is going to win comfortably because I just don't see. And I don't know. Max Tooley is going to be a big a big point of contention in this game. Does he play? Um, you know, does Tuiati Mariner play? Um, you know, the like Kingsley Suamatai is, uh, is supposedly, you know, going to play tonight. We'll see with the knee injury. Like, there's yeah. a lot of questions. Jaron Hall hasn't cared who the wide receiver is. Chase right. Roberts, Puka Nakua, it doesn't matter. He's been able to throw the ball. I expect BYU to operate. I expect BYU to win 42-17. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a little more because I think Utah State's going to turn it over. That's why I feel like the mid-40s, 45, you know, not much Man, more than that. that's a huge but number. I know it's a huge number, but when you turn the ball over four times a game, every game, that's a problem. You know, a team like BYU is going to take advantage of that. So that's why I feel like it's mid 40s. Like, definitely. I, I do. I guess okay. I do think they cover. Yeah, I guess I, I do think they cover. All right. Jesse Harsh says Wyoming is the best team in the Mountain West this year. BYU should run over USU. Only thing is this Utah State Super Bowl. Well, uh, yeah. Jesse, I actually think you're exactly right about that. I yeah. think that this is this is Utah State Super Bowl. This is the biggest game of the year for Utah State. It always has been. It always will be. I think there is no doubt that Utah State loves coming to Provo and 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 causing bloodshed. We've seen that repeatedly, repeatedly in, in yeah. history. So we'll see. Uh, Jesse says, uh, Gunner finally back. Yes, he is. Uh, the Big Mugamba says, with Tuiaki, anything is possible. Ah, it's always Tuiaki's fault. It's always... Jake... It's Tuiaki's fault. I know. Tuiaki's the worst defensive coordinator in the world. We get it. And Morris says, uh, Romney opens the offense, the big Mugamba. That was a diss, not a compliment. Yes, we yes. know. We Thank know. you. We're, we agree. Uh, let's see. Uh, Norge Coog says, agree, Jake, 45 to 9. That's a possibility. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Norge. Did you say forty-five to nine? I mean, Alabama was fifty-five nothing. I'm so, no. He said forty-five to nine. Yeah. But you yeah. twenty-five. Is that like a basketball score after the first quarter? Forty-five to nine would be humiliating. Well, that's what I think BYU is doing today. I think or tonight. I think BYU is is more than potent enough to put up that kind of game. Lopes Van Gabe says 10,500 steps deep already this morning, Chris. Where are you at? Really? Damn, Gabe. Okay. Go back to bed. Uh, Jesse Harsh says the defense will and has been more aggressive. Turnovers, man. BYU has only forced one turnover this season, but BYU doesn't have but one turnover, and it was a throw in the end zone. Logan Bonner tends to put the ball where the defense can catch it. And I, I, you know, again, I, I maintain that this secondary for BYU has played really well. Yeah. I think one of the things that they've really been able to lock down is coverage. I think they've been around the football consistently. I've been really pleasantly surprised. The linebackers have continued to make plays. I mean, Ben Bywater's having a pretty good year. Max Tooley, I thought, really struggled against Oregon, was out last week. Let's see what he does this week. Yeah. I think this defensive line's got to get healthy and they got to eat. I mean, you, you, if you're a defensive lineman, you want your fettuccine and fried chicken tonight against Utah State, and you want massive helpings and servings of it. And I think that's what you get because... Sorry, did you just say fettuccine and fried chicken? Yeah, man. Guys like to eat. What's the problem? You know what? Like, I, I, I don't see why this is an issue. Okay. And, you okay. know... Okay. I just... Yeah. I think he, he, one of the interesting points here is what Kalani Sataki said... Um, about his guys being honest about where they're at physically during a game. You know, the majority of our starters get the majority of the reps, but we're going to use different personnel sets. I mean, Wyoming switched from three tight ends to two tight ends, two backs and two tight ends to, you know, four wideouts and three wideouts. So we're going to match up our talent. And so I, that's what we're going to do on defense. And if our, if our D-line's uh, tired or anybody on defense is tired, uh, we've taught them that, uh, you know, they're back up fresh at 100% is better than them being fatigued so also be smart with yourself when 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 our guys are playing f with uh, extreme fatigue is when the injuries usually set in so that's been huge emphasis for us is to try to keep our guys trusting in each other but also being smart about their own health okay there you go yeah i mean i love that i i think you have to be honest about where you are and how you're feeling during a game because BYU's had so many injuries this year, I just don't think you can sustain more. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, I need to get it right. Uh, Norge Coog has corrected me. It's Norga. 
I'm a terrible person, and listen, I let have, me stop the music. Hold on. I, yeah, can we please turn? Yeah, the music? Okay. okay. So, so you're you're a horrible individual. Terrible. I mean, you should be embarrassed. How about Tanner Plummer taking a shot at me on Twitter last night? Like, I make this really heartfelt tweet. Um, I you know tweet some pictures of Jake. I'm like, hey, it's National Sons Day. Just want to say, hey, thanks. You put up with my bullshit all day. Like, what would I do without you? Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I mean, yeah, hey, love you. Everything's everything's great. And that's at 9.30 last night. And Tanner's like, hey, nice job doing that with three hours left in the day. Hey, come on. You're fired. You're no longer the executive producer of the show. Because now Norga Coog, Norga Coog is now the executive producer well, of the show. there you go. You know. There you go. Um, Jeremy Bolton. And look, Jeremy, I, you know, sometimes I forget to open the garage door too. But you clearly are insane. I kid. Uh, box score after four quarters, Jeremy Bolton says. Jaron with 824 yards and nine touchdowns, 189 rushing yards, and a QBR of 530. <laughs> Josh Lovren says, wait, only a QBR of only 530? <laughs> and Jeremy corrects him and says, no, it's 530.1. Got I it. I mean, got it. What now? Let me tell you what now. Remember, Uncle Monty said 42 uh, 17. BYU wins while we eat Papa Murphy's pizza. No one goes all in on made from scratch freshness like Papa Murphy's. We go all in on quality. All in on craft. And on the triple pep pizza, we go all in on pepperoni. Because when you go all in, people notice. Go all in with a limited time triple pep pizza topped with three types of pepperoni for just $11.99. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. By the way, uh, Norga Coog says, uh, you're awesome, Monty. It's 3 o'clock in Norway, and my boss thinks I'm working. <laughs> 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 By the way, I'm coming to Norway this year um, without Jake, because I'm a terrible father. It was 9.30 when I said he was a good son yesterday. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. It's only National Sunday. I mean, you know, on, wasted an entire, cool. what is that, yeah, 23 fine. and a half hours? Uh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. 22 and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, you did. You know. Yeah, Should be, it's offensive. Yeah, I'm terrible. Uh, but I'm, my 50th birthday is February 19th. I'm going snowboarding in Norway. Okay. Norga, I need a, I need a, I need a resort, man. Let's do this. Preferably um, on the Epic Pass. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying. Uh, the Monty Show presented by the Advocates, UtahAdvocates.com. When you're in an accident, you need an attorney. There's only one choice. UtahAdvocates.com. No consultation fees. No retainers. Simply put, you don't pay the advocates until they win your case. And trust me when I say, when you're in an advocate, uh, when you're in an accident, you need an advocate because the insurance companies are not your friend. Your insurance, their insurance, any insurance company is trying to pay you as little as possible. That's why you need somebody to fight for you. You need somebody to defend you. You need an advocate. UtahAdvocates.com. The biggest story in sports this morning. Certainly BYU and Utah State tonight in Provo. BYU is a 24-point favorite. It's hefty. Yeah. 42-17 is my lock this morning. We just sit in football at 50 um, Jake again knows nothing about football. Um, so I go 42 17. He goes off the reservation with this insane pick of 45 17. Can you measure it? So you like him to cover the 24? I do. Okay. I do. All right. I, I, I feel weird just saying it, but I actually do. Okay. Okay. I think it's 42 17. Would love your <laughs> score predictions in the comments. Uh, we have breaking news this morning. Uh, sources in the TV industry are telling us that. Uh, the Pac-12 and ESPN are far, far, far apart, much further apart than had been reported. We have been hearing that it was $100 million. Our sources are telling us that it's 50% apart, as in ESPN is only offering $800 million over a five-year span for Pac-12 TV rights, while the Pac-12 conference is asking for a minimum of $1.5 billion. Texas me. Which is a huge difference. That's sixteen million per year if you're ESPN per school. That's almost double at thirty million dollars per year per school for the Pac-12. Terribly vexed. I just don't see a path to survival if you are the Pac-12 here. The other sticking point on this whole thing has been this termination trigger in the contract that ESPN wants. We're told 
a, a, a trigger that if the, the Pac-12 shrinks, that they can terminate their contract with the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. And of course, the Pac-12 is not going to allow that. I just don't see a window in time where this gets done. And and I think one of the major talking points when we talk about where the Pac-12 is going is what is the impact on this for the Mountain West? Because I think the Mountain West, obviously here in the great state of Utah, the Mountain West has a storied history, whether that be Utah and BYU, whether that's their, you know, their exit from the conference, Utah winds up in the Pac-12, the drama with BYU going as an independent, the overwhelming domination and growth that BYU saw Uh, Over the Pac-12, over the last several years, as an independent, Utah struggled to get just a passable amount of revenue from the Pac-12. And now, after all of that consternation, here we have the Mountain West in a position, according to television industry sources, to actually come away in a much stronger position by adding Oregon State and Washington State and building rivalries having the ability to put the Apple Cup on TV every year, having the ability now um, to be in a region with San Diego State, Boise State, Oregon State, Washington State, to have real games of consequence, real games of consequence in the Mountain West is something that we have not seen in a number of years. And you look at tonight's opponent for BYU, Utah State, that's a program that is struggling to just be relevant, not nationally, not regionally, just in the state of Utah. Yeah. If the Mountain West survives and they are able to add Oregon State and Washington State and they are able to up their ante as far as per school TV revenue, that's a game changer for the Mountain West. And let's remember where the Mountain is currently. Craig Thompson is done in about 10 weeks. He is going to no longer be the commissioner of the Mountain West. This is a new generation of Mountain West conference existence. This is a time where the Mountain West can actually propel themselves into relevance on the national scale. They are already a a conference that has a team like a Boise State who has played for BCS National Championships, right? So you have a situation where it's not just the Pac-12 that we're talking about. You look at this also, the situation with the Big Ten and sources tell us that Apple TV would really like to be that digital streaming tier rights holder for Big Ten football, it makes a lot of sense because if the the Big Ten is able to add even more revenue to the pie, then they can easily expand where you're not taking money out of the, the pockets of current membership, which, by the way, much to your credit... I believe you talked about when they did that mega TV deal several weeks back. We said, well, now what does this mean for current membership if you add teams? Mm -hmm. Does that shrink the pie a little bit? Well, now if you have Apple TV and there have been reports that Amazon and and the Big Ten were talking about a streaming tier, if you add Amazon or Apple TV, now that pie doesn't shrink. And if it does shrink, it shrinks considerably less. Yeah than it would have. You're mitigating. It, it makes it a lot more palatable to add four more teams to this pie for the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. All of this to say the Pac-12 is on death's doorstep, Jake. I don't see any way they make it through here. Yeah, and I think the biggest difference is, is like even when you're talking about the Big Ten, you know, third-tier rights and the you know the pie shrinking less, you got to understand that that's third tier. I mean, you're still just raking in cash in this conference. And and that to me is is the thing that's always stood out about the the Pac twelve. I mean, even if you go back to the inception of the Larry Scott days, not having a a real, like actual legitimate distribution deal and just being on Dish Network on the Pac twelve network, you know, that that to me was the beginning of the end. And that's kind of what I've been thinking about like how long or has has the Pac-12 had an opportunity to to right the ship here and fix this and 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 do basically just do better by their schools. I mean if if the Pac-12 5 years into Larry Scott's tenure as commissioner would have rolled out a partnership with DirecTV, right? And just been on whatever like a Fox or an ESPN just a traditional nothing special, you know, TV deal you would have already been in a much better place. And that, to me, is what's so sad about this situation because I do believe the Pac-12 is going to die. I do believe that the Big Ten is going to take Oregon, Washington, Stanford, Cal. Like They're going to take that northern suburb of the conference, if you will. Yes, they are. And the Big 12 is going to clean up the South. And 
George Klyovkov, with all due respect, you and your team are going to be out of a job. So to me, I just don't know Ugh. what we're really talking about. And it didn't have to be this way. This yeah. is the frustrating thing. And particularly, I think, if you're a football fan in the state of Utah, and if you're a Utes fan, certainly, it didn't have to be this way. This what this Pac-12 conference had every opportunity to win, to grow, to expand, to dominate. It had every opportunity to do that. And stupidity and stubbornness and a lack of business acumen, a lack of the ability to operate at a high level in Silicon Valley has absolutely crippled this conference. It is we un- did what we did. It is unfathomable yeah. that the Big Ten has run laps around the Pac-12 from a revenue and business perspective that Apple TV and Amazon are both on the the table for the Big Ten streaming tier, call it third tier, call it streaming tier, whatever you want. And the Apple TV thing, not to cut in on you, but the Apple TV thing, one wrinkle in that that I think is really important that you can't skip over is that Apple TV does not like to buy just like one portion of a TV deal or like right. like one sliver. They want to buy the whole damn league, basically. That's what they did with MLS. That's what they're looking at with other opportunities. So when you, when you talk about Amazon and Apple TV and these other digital partners, Apple TV to me stands out you know, uniquely because they're not interested in just having like a little bit. Like if they're going to do a distribution deal, even if it is third tier, they need like, you know, a beefy third tier deal. So that to me is really important when you're looking at the Big Ten versus the pack and yeah. how that all works. And I think when you can put UCLA and USC on on Apple TV, yes. you're going to draw you're going to draw viewership. Oh, yeah. And I, I think the the. You know, the the acceptance of streaming television is not universal across the country. I absolutely think Silicon Valley, Southern California, I think the the what is what is the right word to say? The assimilation, the acceptance of watching major sports happen on stream is absolutely more palatable in Southern California than it is in, you know, Columbus, Ohio. Think about it. Think I think about it. I, like, I, it makes a lot more in sense. In those regions, in Southern California, and even in Northern California, in the Bay Area, like California and really up and down the West Coast is insanely expensive. So if you think about the person who maybe owns, let's just call it a condo, like a small place, but they're an owner of that property, they're probably not a big TV person because they got to work their ass off to afford it because they love living in California or Seattle or Oregon or well, whatever. And I think when you're you're also when you're in warmer climates, you're not sitting in the house in December watching That's college great football. Point. Another great you're point. You're at the beach streaming USC Ohio State on your phone. Yeah, and I, I think that's why all of this is so significant. Damn it. <laughs> This is why (laughs) all of this is so significant. Let's get your thoughts in here. And by the way, I would love to hear from you guys on, are you all in on streaming? Like Thursday night football tonight, I have it set up on my 70 inch TV up in my living room. I'm we have Amazon prime video as an app. Like it's easy for us to watch it. Yeah. And and I'm curious as the weeks go on with this Amazon setup, does Herb Street get better? Does like does the feel is it of more the broadcast? comfortable? Yeah, the, like because because it is true. Like not to get too far off track here, um, but it is true that broadcasting teams need probably five or six weeks together to get real in sync. Like that's a reality in the industry. So I'm curious. That's like something I'm definitely going to be listening for. Was tonight. that like a Justin Timberlake reference in sync? Um, no, that wasn't, but that's really good by you. Yeah. Right, great. You're, you're mm-hmm. welcome. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get your, let's get your thoughts. Um, <laughs> Carlin LaFaver says, what's up you two YouTube hacks? Not Good much, casual. man. We're just over here, you know, just, yeah, we're just, just doing us, you know, you know, uh, Derek Gray says baby was born, but has to be in NICU for a few days. I'll miss you guys for a couple of things. Damn. Oh, Derek, I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. Uh, I congratulations, hope but I hope it works too. Man, you know? I, I don't know. And I could be wrong about this here on the Monty Show, uh, presented by um, the advocates, utahadvocates.com. I could be wrong, but I, le- I believe this show has caused more sex. Lover boy. Could be wrong. We have many, hey. many births taking place on this show. Listen, man. And I believe we have germinated seeds in many, many gardens. Yeah. Because we know that several members of the show, Greg Hawkins comes to mind. I mean, 
They've got babies' buns in the oven and stuff. I love that show. You know, look at my guy, like Neville93. Yeah. Look at my guy talking with Raphael Podcast. On BYU Radio. Just had a baby. Now I got my guy over here, Derek Gray, having a baby. Yeah. I believe I more. I believe we have caused aphrodisiac. The Monty so Show's an aphrodisiac. Yeah, the Monty Show's an aphrodisiac. You have to check it before you wreck it. Or, or don't. Just, you know, dive in head first. That downstairs kitty cat is not you, yours to have, okay? You know what I'm saying? Um, did you say shrinks or stinks? Exactly. Exactly right. Jake Brandon says, uh, good luck, man. That sounds rough. Yeah, seriously, good luck. Uh, Josh Lovren says, does Craig Thompson know that his members are looking to take over the Pac-12's brand? Well, I think Craig, listen, Craig Thompson is one of the most controversial commissioners in college sports. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think when you look at um, what Craig Thompson's done or not done, the Mountain TV network was an abject failure. Yeah. I think Craig Thompson is not popular amongst his constituents. And I think, you know, like there's this notion that commissioners act only at the behest of their, you know, presidents and chancellors. I got news for you. Like Larry Scott, for certain, was not acting at, at, at the whim of his chancellors and presidents. Obviously not. I mean, Larry Scott riled his 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 membership consistently. Yeah. And ultimately, that's what got him out the doors. He, he didn't have relationships. Why do you think that USC and their president absolutely torpedoed expansion of the conference a year ago? Yeah. Because they were not respecting of of Larry Scott and they certainly were not going to do what George Klyovkov told him to do and they were not going to act in kind so this idea that you know like the SEC and the Big Ten are different Kevin Warren absolutely has the ability to act with the consult of Big Ten presidents because it's all part of the plan I look at George Klyovkov George Klyovkov does not have relationships George Klyovkov does not have the trust and confidence of his membership yeah and it's a Man, big, why should it's a he? huge difference. Why should he? Yeah, and but but again, why is Brent Yormark out doing a barnstorming tour of Pac-12 universities? Yeah. Or Big 12 universities, excuse me. Because he's building relationships yeah. and he's doing it right. And what is Brett Yormark not doing? He's not talking about how we're taking every one of their members. Yeah, yeah I know what time it is. He's not out running his mouth like George Klyovkov is doing hit pieces on Homer podcast. Do we still have the back of the envelope thing? Because I because I know that there's a lot of I'm, I'm sure there's some new folks who had, didn't hear that conversation we had. Like this this piece right here is just is just incredibly like beyond me. Back to the envelope calculations on the negative impact on UCLA expenses, travel expenses, and just expenses for coaching salaries and other things, just to get to the average Big Ten athletic budget and. Um, you know, we, we think that uh, the incremental money they're going to receive from the Big Ten media rights deal will be more than 100% offset by additional expenses. So you end up taking that money that you earn and it goes to airline and charter companies and coaches and administrators. It doesn't go to supporting the student athletes. Uh, that's an absolute hit piece by George Klyovkov. That is George Klyovkov, the commissioner yeah. of the Pac-12 going on. Uh, Wilner and Kinzano's podcast to, I, I, look, I love John Wilner. I love his work, but there's no doubt that he's a Pac-12 homer, right? I, I think, and, and I don't think they run from that. I, I don't think they and run from that. And I don't think it's that. a I, bad know, thing, yeah. but I think you also have to understand why George Klyovkov, again, the commissioner of the Pac-12, is not going on ESPN. Right. He's certainly not coming on this show, and we have asked. He's not coming on this show because Kinzano and Wilner are not going to ask him follow-up questions. Well, right. one of the things that you hear there is, well, the, you know, UCLA is damaging its athletes. Why did he say that? Well, is it because two days later there was a, a Board of Regents meeting in the UC system where he tried to torpedo UCLA by writing a written statement? I mean, Schemers this is... trying to control their little I, I world. mean, seriously, though. Like, that's exactly what this is. Yes. He's scheming to try and torpedo UCLA's move so that he can try and get a better TV deal from ESPN. Yes. The problem is the Board of Regents have not acted. Yeah. They have not said, because by all accounts, the UC system, the California education system, has the right to terminate UCLA's agreement with the Big Ten. Why haven't they done that? Well, because they know that Cal, Stanford, Oregon, and Washington are, are right behind them. So get your facts straight. George Klyovkov is doing nothing more than playground rumor antics torpedoing 
in my opinion, George Klyovkov bold-faced lied to you right and, there. And this is this whole concept that, that you talk about a lot, about how, like, control is is not real. Because I, like, I feel like George Klyovkov feels like he has control of this situation and feels like, oh, well, if I do, you know, if I go on, you know, Wilner and Canzano or if I do this media session or that media session and I say a certain type of thing, like like uh, Pac-12 Media Days, another great example, you know, a while back. Like, what you know, the bravado he showed on Pac-12 Media Day – like, just the things he said, I, I, I was like, dude, like, where do you get off saying that, hey, the Pac-12 is the greatest conference since sliced bread? How does that work? Like, Listen, 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 man. The, the wheat is waving high. Rock chalk, man. <laughs> Look at this comment. This is amazing. k Do says, so, dude. good morning, guys. Great show, we know. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you, George. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> he says, good morning, guys. Great show. The wheat is waving high and mighty in Jayhawk Nation. Who the f*** is that guy? I love you. <laughs> That's I awesome love comment just right there. For, and k do validate this for me. How long has it been since we've been able to say rock chalk about football? Hey, seriously. But seriously, though. All jokes aside, that's true. The, way, the wheat is waving high and mighty in Jayhawk Nation. Hey, you start talking shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's go. <laughs> I love it. It, uh, it's, it is past time. Come on, Utah, Arizona, ASU, Colorado. Join the best competitive conference in the okay, country. Okay, you had me until the last line. Everything else before the last line, perfect. Look, Dave Hickey, stop Get using the Garner hell accounts. out of here with the Big 12 <laughs> is the best conference. Play the... Play the Dave Hickey thing. Let's play that okay, real quick. Okay, this is Dave Hickey, the athletic director at Arizona. And, I mean, you want to talk about ayahuasca? You want to talk about, like, uncontrolled drug use? I do believe that Dave Hickey has an addiction problem. But I'm very proud of the position that the University of Arizona is in. We are strong. We're solid. Um, this institution will be in the right place. Um, I'm also very confident in the Pac-12 uh, with its current membership of 10 now. But, again, we still have two years before – those two other institutions leave but uh, we've got to be planning and orchestrating and be ready to pivot and do the right things but i'm very confident in how the pac-12 looks and how this conference looks going forward we're an anchor in the west we're one of the greatest conferences that there's ever been we have so much tradition and history here connected to the rose bowl um shut up man don't what? lie to me what? <laughs> What we're one of the greatest conferences it's ever been. Congratulations, but that's bullshit. So okay, let's go back to dude's comment. Can you can you pull dude's comment back up, K Do? Because I I love the comment. Yes, I can pull that back up. Where Where, is where's K -Do? my right guy, there. K Do? There you go. All right, so everything before join the best competitive conference in the country <laughs> is the same thing that Dave Hickey just said. Love you, dude. I really I appreciate mean, the comment. That you, that was awesome. I'm just curious. Do you bake or fry your weed? Like, yeah, what you are, are you, you know talking what I'm about, Dave? Dave <laughs> listen, Dave Hickey, the athletic director at Arizona, who you saw there. Yeah. And I believe that was on K-Gun TV in Tucson. Mm -hmm. uh, but Dave Hickey, uh, come on. Get, get the, what are you talking? Do, does anybody in the you? yeah? Does anybody in the Pac-12 tell the truth? I, I'm Doubt being that. serious. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think they do. Does anybody in that conference tell the truth? No, I guess not. They don't. It's it's remarkable to me. It is remarkable to me. Uh, San Diego State Aztec says, "Oh, and my baby making days are over. Not the act, but well, you know. Hey now, hey now. Yeah, I'm I'm in that same over over." procedure I have dingers. you know and stuff yeah uh josh lover says kansas bowl projection is new year six versus bama okay well the fun had to well, end somewhere it's been a nice season you know mh5 says rock chalk k2 exactly right uh steve moser says how is the big 12 not the best <laughs> conference currently here we go CK do you come in here <laughs> weave it, waving your weed all over the place and all of a sudden we got to argue the over the The corn is flowing well today. The corn is waving in Iowa. Ayahuasca, Iowa, Iowa, Iowa. Um you know there is no doubt in my mind that the SEC, the Southeast Conference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just ask Paul Feinbaum. Paul Feinbaum. Uh the SEC is the king of the world. Right. Um, I would have to say the Prince then at that point, and I have no idea where we're going with, with royalty, but I am work with me. Right. Um, I would think number two would be the big 10. Right. 
And then there's everybody else because they're not. There isn't a number three. I I do think there there's not a number three. I mean, I I've always said I really like where the Big Twelve is. I think the Big Twelve is in a position of strength by simply not acting at all. Well, look, I mean, the truth is, is uh, we're not sitting here saying the Big Twelve sucks. That's not what. That's not, not the conversation. At all. I, I think the conversation's always been that it was the SEC and everybody else for a long time. I think the Big Ten, with the moves it's making in TV distribution, the teams it's adding, and the rumored, you know, not really rumored, we know that it's, you know, going to happen, like, you know, Oregon and that whole, con you know, contingent coming to the conference. Once that happens, I mean, it is the SEC, the Big Ten, and everybody else. I think the Big 12 has teams that are college football playoff caliber. Uh, obviously, with the college football playoff uh, expanding, you know, whenever that does happen, the Big 12 is is undoubtedly going to put teams into the college football playoff. Um, but I just think when we get down to brass tacks and we're sitting here talking about, you know, what the best conference is, it's the SEC. And I just don't think that, that that's in question. And I don't want that to come off or be received as I'm saying the Big 12 sucks because it doesn't. I just think the SEC is better. I would go back to... I would go back to the change of Brett Yormark becoming the, the commissioner. Uh huh. Because it would have been easy for Brett to come in and be like, oh, I got to make a splash. I got to do something. I got to. And he didn't do that. Right. Let's be really clear about one thing the Big 12 is making money by doing nothing at all. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. I, and I think he's handled it brilliantly. Yeah. I really it's do. It's absolutely brilliant. And when, you know, when you can, when you can make additional money, without doing anything at all by, you know, simply going to tridaytrading.com slash Monty and watching a free webinar. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. I mean, that's so your Markian. What better fucking execution? Tridaytrading.com. <laughs> I it is fun for me to sit here mentally and just wait for the opening and define. I can you know, swing the door open. Uh, let's not talk about swinging. Let's talk about try day trading. Have you tried day trading? A lot of people have tried day trading. You've dabbled. You probably got in on Doge to the moon. To the moon, baby. But did you get in on AMC? Did you get in on GameStop? Did you get in on this stock or that did stock? Did you make money? Were you in or out when Amazon split, right? So the question is, have you tried day trading? If you haven't, you need to. Trydaytrading.com slash Monty. Register and watch the free webinar. There's no obligation. It costs you absolutely nothing. It's a free webinar. And it's a local business. Yes, based in Lehigh, Utah. No matter where you are, I know we have a lot of people that watch us throughout the country because of the things we talk about. Anywhere you are in the great United States of America or Canada, uh, <laughs> please feel free to get to tridaytrading.com slash Monty. Register for the free webinar and watch it. As, as, a, as a Utah company, I can tell you we've talked extensively with Ryan and the guys at Triday Trading. They're fabulous dudes. They understand it. They know that they can get you off of your uh, side hustle hamster wheel, as we call it, and really into serious money making. Stop grinding on Amazon FBA. Stop, you know, stop grinding on whatever that side hustle is that's wearing you out. Stop working nine to five for the man. Think about what you're doing. You're grinding nine to five so you can get that paycheck and make somebody else money mm -hmm. to come home maybe and you're too tired. So that side hustle falls by the wayside. Yeah. And now it's not doing anything for you and you're going to forget about it and you're going to go try something else as a side hustle. Stop doing that. Get to tridaytrading.com slash Monty. Watch the free webinar because what's going to happen is you're going to watch that webinar and you're going to say, oh. Maybe I'm the guy who can make thousands of dollars a week or a month. Yeah. Maybe I'm the guy who can get out of my nine to five. And one of the things that is certain about trydaytrading.com slash Monty is day trading can be scaled into your full-time job and then some. Mm -hmm. The next guy that becomes a millionaire day trading should be you. But will it? Will you take that step? Because that's what's required. You got to have the, the, the cojones to take that first step into the best life possible at tridaytrading.com slash Monty. Get out of your nine to five. Jake and I did it. It's terrifying. But once you take that first step, the water's perfect, man. It feels good. You yep. start swimming and all of a sudden you're making money at tridaytrading.com slash Monty. Register for the free webinar. Tridaytrading.com, a proud sponsor of the Monty Show. Appreciate you guys. Um, you know, working with our sponsors, spending your money on, on our favorite recipes at, at, Papa Murphy's Pizza, um, you know, all of our guys, mm -hmm. all of our partners. We need you guys to move to them. We need you to spend your money with them. We need you to watch free webinars at tridaytrading.com slash Monty because they're going to change your life. Yeah. 
Trust me when I say that. 728 on the Monty Show. Let's keep talking uh, about Big 12 expansion, Pac-12 death. Josh Lovren says the uh, Pac-12 take talking history till the league is history. Exactly. That's right. Precisely. That's right. Precisely. Uh, M. Morris says basketball. Oh, there's no doubt the Big 12 is the best basketball conference in the country. Agreed. And if you add Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and Colorado, let's say as an example, you're getting a storied program at Utah. You're getting one of the better programs in the history of college basketball at Arizona. Although, as Jake loves to point out, Sweaty Sean kind of tanks some of that. Um, but you're getting competitive programs. I don't know ultimately what happens at Colorado. I really don't. But I think those are good ads. Academically, Colorado's a nice ad. They're garbage yeah. athletically. Yeah. But you look at what where the Big 12 is now. Just think about adding BYU, Cincinnati. Cincinnati's ha got great history in basketball. UCF, Houston. You you turn that into, you know, becoming the the Big 16. Mm -hmm. Dude, you're in a position of power in basketball. There's no doubt about that. And if teams like Kansas can continue to do what they're doing, programs like Kansas in football, you're only better for it because you're going to be one of the – when you expand, when you add these four teams next year into the Big 12, now you're a much better football conference. Right. You're losing Texas and Oklahoma. I get that. But if you ask yourself, well, look at Oklahoma last week. Look at Texas over the last five years. What has Texas really been since the Rose Bowl with Vince Young? Yeah. He hasn't been a powerhouse, right? I think from Tom Herman and, you know, the end of Mac Brown and now Sark and – there's been a lot of struggles in Austin to really achieve in football. I think the loss is Oklahoma until Texas proves otherwise. I think you can cover those losses with BYU in football, BYU in basketball. I think you certainly could cover those losses with Cincinnati and Houston. UCF is a great unknown. What is UCF's ability to recruit out of their own state in Florida? What's left of it? Um, what's, what is their ability to recruit their athletes and keep them in state at UCF and bring them to the big 12? That's a big question. Cause yeah. there are pipelines from many schools, including Utah, by the way, a lot of kids out of Florida come to Utah. If UCF keeps those kids in Florida now, the big 12 is better for it. So there's a lot of questions there. And I also think again, coach Loverin, I know that you're a, you're a, 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 a Washington guy. You're a PAC 12 Northwest guy. You know what Pullman means to the Mountain West. Yeah. You know what Washington State and Oregon State means to the Mountain West. I this this collapse of the Pac-12 is absolutely cataclysmic. It has it has far-reaching implications beyond just the Pac-12. It really does. And at 7:30, we always tell you 30 past the hour what our biggest stories in sports are. Brought to you by our good friends at Barbecue Pit Stop. I don't think there's any doubt this morning that this deal with the Pac-12, and if you're just tuning into the show, let me update you. Uh, sources in the TV industry are telling us uh, that the, the Pac-12 is teetering on, on death. Yeah. They are laying in their deathbed this morning because they are 50% above what ESPN is willing to pay. Come on, man. The Pac-12 had like $1.5 billion over a five-year period, $30 million per school on average. ESPN's only willing to go to 800 over five years, which on average is $16 million a school. That is not viable. And furthermore, when you look at what uh, the Big 12 and the Big 10 are doing, our TV industry sources are telling us that the Big 10 and the pa and the Big 12, rather, excuse me, are just sitting and watching and waiting. Yep. And that there are handshake deals with the, the Big 10, with Oregon and Washington and Cal and Stanford. Uh -oh. And that... Simply the Big Ten is waiting to make a stream tier deal with Amazon or Apple. Apparently, Apple TV has shown a far larger appetite to add Big Ten football. If that happens, it's over. Yeah. So now you can't get a TV deal that's viable, and the Big Ten is simply negotiating a stream deal that could, could absolutely kneecap the Pac-12. And if that happens, you're going to see Oregon State and Washington State end up in the Mountain West. You are going to see the corner schools, which means the Arizonas, Utah, Colorado, those four end up in the Big 12, adding to the four that are coming in now. And the one school I think that is so interesting is San Diego State. Mm -hmm. Because we've heard so much about San Diego State, but why hasn't San Diego State moved? Well, San Diego State hasn't moved because they believe that with a new commissioner coming in, Craig Thompson going out, Yep. And one of Craig Thompson's biggest struggles has been TV rights, money, streaming. That's been the, the big 
blight, if you will, on his resume. With Craig Thompson going out, a new commissioner coming in, San Diego State, Boise State, Utah State, they have reason to believe that if they add Oregon State and Washington State, that they are in a far better position than they they would be if San Diego State had joined the Big 12, where they would really be a, no, a nobody. Yeah. They would be an also-ran that's just simply worth their television market. In the, the in an expanded, bigger, larger pot in the Mountain West, San Diego State has the chance to be that conference. Right now, good luck getting past Washington and Oregon State. Those are two really strong athletic programs already. Yeah. But San Diego State really likes where they are in the mount in an expanded Mountain West, which makes a lot of sense to me, frankly. Yeah, and I think they fit in well in the Mountain West, and I think that that's not uh, a slight at all. I, I that, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I think you know, everyone wants to be like, oh well, you know, Utah should get into the Big Ten, San Diego State, like all these different schools, and it's yeah. like. Hey, you got to understand that the Big Ten, the SEC, like the big boy, like large staple conferences have a very different feel to them than a Mountain West or even the Big 12, you know? And and I think that the, a lot of people take that as offense. And, I, and I'm just simply sitting here to say that I don't I don't think it should be that way. I, I think you have to understand that just because you're not in the SEC or the Big Ten or whatever huge conference, that's not a bad thing. It comes down to X's and O's of business for a, a, a college athletic program. And if you're if the X's and O's of business say, hey, like, you know, the Mountain West is a better fit for us and if we add a couple of schools, we're all gonna make more money, then great. I, I like I don't I just don't see that as a huge knock on anybody. So to me, I, you know, I've always said that I, I think the inevitability in college football specifically, but really obviously it affect college athletics overall is that the sec and the big 10 are going to be the two super conferences. I think that's where we're headed. And I think this is mm -hmm. sort of the first, you know, domino, if you will, this, this, you know, time, this round of, you know, expansion or, conference realignment this round of it is just sort of the first domino i think once this round gets done then the next conversation starts well how can we make it even simpler and and so on and so forth well i and i look at this situation and i look at byu and utah state tonight look at this graphic this is from um byu sports nation on twitter about 10 people sent me this graphic yesterday 2022 college football tv ratings espn2 late night time slot the number one Product on ESPN, late night time slot on ESPN2 is BYU and Wyoming. It's 609,000 viewers, almost double San Diego State and Utah in week three, and more than double Nevada and New Mexico State in week one at 10 p.m. Yeah. I mean, you look at those numbers and you look at what we always say here on the Monty Show presented by the advocates, utahadvocates.com. BYU brings. Brings people to the television set. Yeah. So you have an exclusive audience tonight in in BYU and Utah State. You would expect it over a million viewers in that prime window. Yes. Right. I mean, I I would expect Absolutely, that. Absolutely, hundred percent. I mean, so you, I, you're you're getting that on on a day where you're competing with tons of other games. And you look at the the audio, and I think Josh Lovren tweeted at me yesterday. Um, you look at the the TV audiences. and you look at who brings viewers to the yard. It's it's absolutely positively BYU in that conversation. And, and I, I just don't think it's even close, frankly. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at those numbers um, and it, it was actually super West sports um, total TV viewers. Let me see if I can screen grab this for you real quick. Total TV viewers um, over the, the first four weeks of the, the season. Um, and it's, it's quite remarkable the numbers that we're talking about. Yeah. And I, I find myself in amazement that we continue to talk about the numbers that BYU is doing. Like you you look at this number right here, as I'm filling to get the graphic on the screen. You look at this number right here. This is total TV football viewership through week four. Right. Oregon's number one, Washington State's number two, BYU's number three at 5.56 million. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, that's a big number, man. And you and the other thing I would point out, look at those three schools on top and look at the, the consequences of the conversation we're having this morning. Pullman, Washington, and Josh Lovren, to your credit, you always point this out. Washington State brings boys to the TV. 
I mean, they do. So you you put Washington State in the Mountain West, and all of a sudden you're having a conversation that's very different. Yeah, and I think that the the thing you have to look at with this graphic is is the competitiveness of this list. Like, if you go down, even the last team on the list, San Diego State, that's still a, over a million people watching your game. Yeah. Right? Like, let's put this into perspective. Like, I know Oregon's got 10 times that viewership, and that's great. But I want people to understand that we're not really having a conversation about, hey, Oregon's the best or the Big Ten's the best ever and the Mountain West and San Diego State suck. That's not what we're talking about. But, Jake, these are 14 schools right here. Yeah. How many of these schools are going to change conferences in the next five All years? All of them. All Oregon, of them. Washington State, BYU, USC, Utah, Washington, Stanford, Cal, Colorado, ASU, Fresno State, probably not, Arizona, Boise and San Diego State are up in the air. Of all of those, Fresno and San Diego State, to me, really just Fresno are the is the one that probably doesn't change. Like I could see, I, like I could, I see, could see San Diego State I can going see to a different San conference. San Diego State going to the to a different conference. I could see Boise State finding its way to uh, at, a Big Twelve. Like I could look see at that. all that money. Yes, that, and that's the thing that I would tell you, friends, as we sit here and look at this. That's all TV money right there. And yes. we're, these negotiations are ongoing. And you look at the fact that I, I, it's amazing to me that those brands who's, are all bringing in that amount of viewership. Who's not on this list right here? UCLA. Yeah. Not Big, on the list. So when I think about that bite we played earlier, that and we've been playing it the last couple of weeks or whenever, however long we've had it now, about you know George Klavkov, the commissioner of the Pac-12, saying, oh, yeah, well, we did – back of the envelope calculations and essentially, you know, UCLA going to the Big 10, you know, is going to cost them way more money. You crazy. can't tell me it's crazy. that right now they're not already like you're not costing them more money. You look at attendance, you look at no no TV viewership like they're essentially just suiting guys up for nobody right now. How are you not? Yeah, and so to <laughs> me, I look at, you know, that graphic that we had where it's like Oregon, you know, USC, BYU, like all these nameplates and it's like, hey, these guys are making money. They're bringing, and how are they doing that? They're bringing people to the TV. Yes. I would expect over a million viewers tonight when BYU thumps Utah State. You, How many times is Utah State going to have that TV audience this year? Yeah, they're not. One time tonight in Provo. And to, I, I, was it Josh who said it's their Super Bowl? I mean, that's it absolutely is. true. It, oh, look at that. The bots, the bots are in the chat, Jake. Are they? The bots Where? are in the chat. Yes, oh, they are. Yes, see? they are. Let me get them out of here. See, oh, and shoot. you know, like I, I go off, I go off script for one minute to bring you graphics, and I get spam in the in the comments. And now I blocked it. I appreciate you. What I appreciate now? you guys dealing with that. Let me tell that. you what now. You know. Uh, all right, let's get your comments in here on this uh, football 50 in nine minutes presented by Papa Murphy's Pizza, Papa Murphy's Pizza dot com. Make sure you get the app, order your pizza for tonight. No matter if you're watching the NFL on Amazon Prime or BYU and U uh, Utah State on ESPN, absolutely make sure you get that Papa Murphy's Pizza because it's going to be amazing. Uh, Jansen says, good morning, guys. Uh, surprised to see that many people tuned in for BYU and Wyoming considering they played Wyoming, but well, and that's but, the conversation. But though. that's the point that you get BYU and Wyoming. You're not really getting Wyoming. You're getting BYU. Yes. If BYU with a tiny opponent like Wyoming brings over half a million viewers to the set, that's why I say when you look at it, it the, how much of the state of Utah is watching BYU and Wyoming? Um, well, not as many are going to watch BYU and Utah State, right? On its own. In prime time on a Thursday yeah. night, uh, like you well, feel like it's BYU at Lavelle. That's the thing. Like, and I know everyone's like, "Oh, well, Lavelle's overrated, and Lavelle's not legit." And it's like, "Yeah, dude, it is legit." Like, I Lavelle, think it's one of the best home yeah. field advantages in all of college sports. Yeah, you know, and I, and I think that you know, so yeah, you have this great home field advantage. It looks great. It feels great. It feels big. Like this game against Baylor, yeah, they played several weeks ago. Like, it, it just has this certain you know, like feel that it's almost tangible when you're watching the game. You're like, man, this, this feels like a big game, even it's, though it is Wyoming. It's, but look at Utah state tonight. It's six, it's six o'clock. Everybody's home. Yeah. It's ESPN. Everybody's got it. And it's BYU. And by the way, if, if they get over a million viewers for this game, which is, you know, it's pretty much, I you think can it's a book lot. It. Yeah. like I think, well, I think they're going to get it. I think they're going to get over a million views tonight. 
I think that that really says something on the same night when the NFL is on TV. Well, but, but, what, and this is, I feel like this is a conversation we always have. The NFL's on stream. Like the, the NFL is not on, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's not on I ESPN think or ABC is, or This or conversation Fox. though, the, the opportunity for stream to compete with traditional TV yes. is something we haven't seen a lot yet in sports. And that's what's so fascinating to me about it is like, I don't, the stream thing specifically on Amazon is difficult because you can't, one of the things we do as sports fans is, okay, BYU's on ESPN, let's say, or whatever. Okay, halftime. All right, I want to go and watch Aaron Judge hit a baseball, which we're going to get to later in the show, by the way. I want to go and watch Aaron Judge hit a baseball. I want to go and watch, you know, Hurricane Ian coverage of some dude getting hit by a tree while he's giving us the news. You know, like, I want to flip around and see these things. Hurricane. And, and, and because the NFL is on Amazon— I'm probably more apt to watch college football and be able to flip around than watch the NFL. Oh, that there's said, no doubt about that. that there's said, no doubt about that. The NFL is still going to print money and print viewership on that stream because it's on a stream and the younger generation watches it on their phone and they can track all that and they can see it. So that's why I say I'm excited about the competitiveness of stream versus TV. And when I look at like the Big Ten talking to Apple TV or Amazon or whatever, I think that's a dynamic thing to have as a third tier. I would never want it as my tier one. Couldn't. That's just not an option. But tier three, I think, is great. Okay, Nurin says, uh, still want Hawaii in the Big 12. It, it's You can't. Yeah, sorry, dude. You can't, can't I mean, it. the travel is just untenable. Yeah, it's not going to work. Renee Roca says, Auburn was a six-win team last year. They will still be a six- or seven-win team this year. Even when they're going to fire Brian Harson, they're going to they're going to win more games. Uh, Stephen Guild says, "Is it a religious requirement for Mormons to watch BYU?" No, come on, Why, it is see, not. You ain't got to troll like that. Football, on, no. football's like thirty seventh. Sometimes um, I think I just say shit. Zesty retro and games. <laughs> Zesty's where you been, buddy? He says, "I hope the Big Twelve can get North Carolina and Duke." Uh, into the Big 12 if the ACC explodes. I don't think the ACC is going away. I think the ACC is going to grow. I and it just depends. the The ACC, the ACC's got to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, like because you can't just hang out and wait. Right. In their position, the Big Twelve can hang out and wait because you have an opponent that's imploding. I think the ballsy move for the Pac-12 is to m merge with the ACC. That would be incredible. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Chance, it says, uh, Stephen Guild, when, sadly, when I was growing up in the church, it wasn't a requirement. It should be, though. It shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. Uh, Josh Lovern says, Washington State bulk of viewers live in Seattle Metro. Where is UCLA? I want to say that they're in High Desert. I think they're in Hemet. You, you see? Yeah, take it. See ya. Uh, <laughs> Renee Roca says, LOL, my in-laws are Mormon and support TCU. Uh, okay. K. Nuren says Utah and BYU to the Big Ten. Never happening. Yeah, uh, Stephen Guild says no way UNC or Duke go to the Big 12. Not happening. Cam Harrison says my uncle's not LDS. Not a fan of the LDS church, but he loves BYU football and basketball. Is that allowed? Are you allowed to not be LDS and root for BYU? He's just a hack. I don't think that's allowed. Yeah. Um, Jansen says if you're the Big 12 or even the Big 10, you want Oregon and Utah to join your conference. Two good teams that bring more competition and eyes to your conference. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't disagree with that. I think Utah is one of the most under-the-radar programs in the country. There, I mean, there's just no doubt about that. Utah, what Kyle Whittingham has built there, the basketball program's got to improve. It has to. But the Big Ten also values, you know, secondary sports. They value Olympic sports. They value gymnastics, track. Um, they value Title IX, women's sports. Like, there's a lot to offer it at Utah, They've got to be better in basketball. There's just, mm -hmm. there's no doubt about that. Cody Strickland says, just got my Papa Murphy's order in. Pick up at 515 today in time and cook before kickoff. Let's go. Let's go, Cody Strickland. Yes, my sir. guy. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. Use the promo code MONTY25 to save 25% off your order. Football 50 in two and a half minutes. Jesse Harsh says, if KU beats Iowa State on Saturday, they're going to Arlington. Could be. Could be. Josh Lovren says market size versus eyeballs. Mm -hmm. That's well, what it is. Again, isn't UCLA's campus in Hemet? Um, that's a small high desert. Just look up Hemet, California. You'll know why I'm saying that. Uh, Roger Sales. What's up, Roger? With a D. R-O-D-G-E-R. -E George K. and Special K is a, limo, is a limo liberal. So you have to understand he feels superior to all. 
knows best, will punish anyone who doesn't think like he does and expects all to believe in him and comply. <laughs> so wait, is he a deity? Is that... Is, is, anyway, uh, Patrick Dagg says, could Gonzaga go to the Mountain West Conference? I The, the problem is, is that Gonzaga doesn't play football. Right. Gonzaga is a tiny school. But wouldn't you love to have Pullman... Um, in Spokane battling. I mean, I think you would love that. But I, I don't know, man. I think, why would you if you're Gonzaga? I mean, yeah. if you're going to join a, a, a basketball only when you join the Big 12, I mean, that to me would make more sense, depending on, by the way, what happens with Washington State and Oregon State. Yeah, you can't get too deep into it, man. Yeah, I mean, Gonzaga is a brand. I, I, would be, I, I would be surprised. Renee Roca says, KU will end up with six wins. It could be. There's no doubt about that. Also says, unfortunately, they play Texas and Lawrence or else it'd be another win. Texas ain't exactly beating a lot of people. Or yeah. Convincingly. So more people need to drink the Kansas Kool-Aid. Yes, they do, Jesse. I appreciate that. I do. Serve it up. Rock chalk. Uh, BYU gets at least 1.2 million viewers tonight. That'd Agreed. be great for BYU. Agreed. That'd be great for BYU. K. Nuren says, yes, the pack missed out on BYU. Huge loss for them. Mike Maples, uh, a lot of Pac-12 fans do a lot of talking on Twitter, but never bring up TV viewership. I wonder why. Uh, Pac-12 has plenty of TV viewership. Yeah. They do. I mean, they have, and mainly because you have Los Angeles, the Bay Area, you know, Seattle. You have great markets. You do. Uh, Rene Roca says, uh, BYU plays tonight? Cool, I'm drinking beer tonight. Wow. <laughs> Keith Carl says, I think Iowa State still beats KU. Uh, I don't know. Leopold's got them balling. But it won't be a gimme game as it has been. No, I, I would absolutely agree. It will not be a gimme game. No doubt. Football 50, 10 of the hour, every hour on the Monty Show. Presented by our good friends at Papa Murphy's Pizza. Make sure you use the promo code Monty25. I mean, so many people on a regular basis are like, hey, I'm getting I'm using your promo code. It saved me $11. It saved me $13. Screen, like, do you, on your phone, if you can, screen record yourself ordering. Show us what you're ordering. Show show us, man. We'd love to see it. Like we're what we'll do. We'll we'll, we'll show you our order tonight too. We'll have yeah, for the we'll show kick tomorrow. down on that. There's no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll 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 show you what we order and what we get, and and let's share it. Let's see who's got the best order. All right, give me your best thirty seconds. BYU or Utah State tonight? Um, you know, to me, I think the the problem with this with this game is it's a very emotional game. The problem with Utah State and BYU at Lavelle is that it's just incredibly emotional, and I think more emotional for Utah State than BYU, and I think that Utah State, I agree with the commenter who said this is their Super Bowl. This is their biggest game yes. of the year, and I'm really concerned about health for BYU. I, 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 You know, Puka came back for one game and re-aggravated the injury. Gunner's going to play in this game, and I hope he, I hope he you know, comes out of it reasonably healthy. So to me, you know, my, my quick 30 seconds on it is I think – BYU is going to kick the living hell out of Utah State. <laughs> it's just going to be a matter of, of you know, the price that they have to pay to do that. Are you coming out of this game clean? Did you lose a lineman? Did you lose a wide receiver? Like, that's what I'm curious about. Well, I think when you look at this game, and in the comments, let's get your score predictions on BYU and Utah State. I think when you look at this game, folks, I, I don't think there's any doubt. The biggest question is, how many yards does Jaron Hall have through the air? Because if he goes off, if he goes 400 yards, which I think he will tonight, um, I think that BYU is is going to win this game. My score prediction is 42-17. Um, I would bet if, if you're a betting guy, and I know we don't bet here in the state of Utah. Yeah, we don't do any gambling. You know, but if you're a betting man, I would take Utah State to cover, and I would go with the over. The over 60, depending on where you get it, 58 and a half to 60, the consensus over, which means the the aggregate of all the, the books is 60 points. I think I would go over simply because BYU is going to score 40 points in this game. Yeah. And you can roll out of bed, trip and fall down the staircase and score 21 points in college football. I would take BYU to win, not cover, and this goes over. I think Jaron Hall is going to have a 400-point game tonight because – Let's also not yeah, 400 forget 400-yard game. 400-yard game, excuse me. Let's not forget that Gunnar Romney is going to play for the first time this season, Jake. I think that's a huge add. Yeah. I think Chase Roberts is going to be back tonight. I think Isaac Rex, Rex has a game tonight. 
And I think that they play so well offensively because Utah State does not get after the quarterback's ass, which is a huge problem against a guy like uh, against a guy like you know a, a, a running threat, a dual quarterback like Jaron. Because then what do you wind up doing as a defense? You wind up blitzing. You try to get exotic when you don't have the talent to get exotic. And Jaron winds up kicking that ass in the run game. And then when you slack off, he's going to he's gonna hit a guy like a, a Gunnar Romney, hopefully, on and underneath. Or you're going to throw it to, you know, like a Mason Wake is going to have a 25-yard reception because you're so concerned about keeping Jaron in the pocket. Yeah. Like, if you're Utah State, you're just not talented enough, in my opinion, to win this game. Now, the other thing I think is so important is what do you do with the run game here? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I would expect Miles Davis to get a pretty good chunk of the carries tonight, and I think that, you know, but, again, this is... But I think that's an interesting question. How many carries do you give Chris Brooks tonight? I think you got to give him 10, at least. I mean, I, mean, it, I think it, you got to give him a chance. And here's the other question. If you're up big, do you... Do you I mean, do you just ride miles? Do you like? Let's say you. Let's say at some point you're if up thirty-five. Got, listen, you're up thirty-five nothing in the third quarter. If Who's I, your running back, dude? If I have thirty going to the half, let's say thirty-five points going into the third quarter. Yeah, my running back. I'm still. I'm still running all three of those guys out there. I, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm. I, if I'm up big, I'm running Christopher Brooks. You've got to get chemistry between Chris Brooks and this offensive line. Wow. And I think that's the biggest problem. I don't think Chris Brooks is a bad back. I don't think this offensive line is bad at run blocking. They just don't have chemistry. And if I'm BYU in this game, I want to see two things. I want to see Jacob Conover late, and I want to see Chris Brooks have a huge night. And I don't care if it's garbage time, and I don't care if it's USU. Christopher Brooks needs to feel good about himself as a running back because you've got Arkansas and Notre Dame coming up in the next two weeks. Notre Dame and Arkansas in that order. You, you've got to feel good about him. Yeah. And I think you still have an interesting road ahead, even if you know Boise State lost their quitter quarterback. I'm good with that. I need Christopher Brooks to, to get on the football and run the ball effectively tonight. I want to feel good about that. I want to see Gunnar Romney play well and then not play anymore in the second half. I want to see Isaac Rex. And, and I think Isaac Rex is an interesting guy here. Yeah. Because Isaac Rex is a guy amongst a mediocre season, which this has been for BYU. This has not been a great year. This has been a mediocre, underachieving football team. Nobody's a better example of that than Isaac Rex. Yeah. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm not saying that Isaac Rex shouldn't. Uh, blah, blah. Isaac Rex should have more than he's got. That's what I'm saying. And yeah, well, I'm not saying that he's. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what that means. My point is, <laughs> Isaac Rex should have more than he's got, but he doesn't. And that's a big concern for me because I have a quarterback in Jaron Hall who Todd McShay, by the way, Todd McShay says that Jaron Hall is is one of the the hottest quarterbacks in the country when it comes to NFL draft. Yeah. I've got a quarterback that is balling. Yeah. I've got a Kalani quarterback. Kalani was raving about him, dude. Yeah, and, and Jaron Hall is is an elite thrower of the back shoulder fade. Isaac Rex has thrived when Jaron's thrown him the ball. Is this Jaron Hall not targeting the tight end? Is this a big play offense? No, it's not. This is an offense that needs a tight end to catch the football, so it can be a big play offense. I haven't seen nearly enough out of Isaac Rex this year. Yeah, I play the. We have a, a Kalani bite here where he talks about Jaron making the right decisions, and I think it's a it's a spot on way to describe what Jaron Hall has done this year. After watching the film, I thought Jaron made the right decisions. You know, it, it's 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 better to punt than to throw an interception and try to take a risk that's not that's not really there. So I, I was I was okay with the decisions that he made, gave our guys a chance to to make plays, and um, you know we we were able to to utilize our punt game a little bit and try to flip the field. Um, but uh, overall, just, you, you, I mean, you, you'll probably never get a, a coach happy unless they're scoring every time they get the ball. So, Well, I don't disagree with that, Kalani. And I think Jaron Hall, the one thing he has not done is turn the ball over. Yeah, He has consistently put the ball in the right place for his receivers, and I think he's been very smart. His intellect has grown as a football player. Yes. Like his football IQ he has gone it. up. There's no doubt about that. All right, time for uh, your score predictions. Where are you guys at on BYU? Um, let me. A lot of you guys are amazing. Are we having amazing? Not to interrupt. Are we having a debate about the music again? Did I see at the bottom, all the way at the bottom of the stack? Did I see comments about the music yeah. again? Joe Ang, Ang, Ang Joe piano player. I love the music. <laughs> Reminds me when I was a kid watching NFL highlights. Who was the father-son who did them? Love the different music they played. Great memories. Oh, yeah, that's dude. cool. 
Absolutely cool. Uh, Joe also gives us a three dollar sticker. Appreciate, appreciate you, Joe. You. Thank you, man. And and bro, Guia- his name ain't Guiano. Joe. His name ain't Joe. It's John. John. God, John. Bro, bro. come on, step your game up. John Anguiano, thank you for the three dollar tip. Uh, Cage says Cam Rising greater than Jaron Hall. Look, mm. man, it's never too early to do drugs in the morning. I'm yeah. with you. Um, are there any USU fans here? Oh boy. What you mean, like in the state of Utah? No, no. No, they live in southern Idaho. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Kay Nuren says Utah State uh, will hurt your players. More BYU players are hurt for the year. Well, hopefully not. Dallin Sproul says Isaac Rex also is still coming back from his ankle, so he came back early. Those are all reasons. Well, listen, I think you got to get more from him. You know, you, you got to get more from him. Uh, Jesse Harsh. Now, see, I like this score prediction. BYU 69, Utah State 2. <laughs> I mean, bro, Jesse, bro, on, man. stop. 69 to 2. You and I both know they're going to score seven points. It's 69 to 7. And by the way, BYU 69 is not allowed at BYU. Uh, Kyle J. The honor, the honor code. Wait, like, okay. Uh, Kyle J. <laughs> says Utah State 31, BYU 30. Old Droid misses a PAT as time expires to secure the loss. Stop. Get the hell out of here with that. Jansen says 38-14 BYU. Kurt Meyer says, ooh, 27-17 BYU? That would not be a good win. Not at all. BYU 38, USU 15, Daryl says. Giggity! My guy. 38-17 BYU. Kurt says it's going to be BYU by 10. No, it's not going to be that close. It's not. Jeff Johnson says, dang, that football music has me pumped. Yeah, dude, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Marlon Shaw. Hey, Marlon, how are you, dude? Hope you're well. Marlon's a Floridian. Well, this is good that Marlon's commenting. That means he made it through the night. Everything's good. Like, are you on generator or electricity? Dude, dude is in Florida and sat through the hurricane. Mountain West Conference has Hawaii as football only, so Zags could be the offset. Question is, what will happen when Pew leaves? Do you want to lock them in long term? If so, join the Big 12. And uh, make the basketball even stronger. Yeah, if, it, if if Mark Few leaves, forget it. I mean, just forget. I, I mean, if Mark Few leaving um, is a disaster like not ordering Papa Murphy's pizza tonight. No one goes all in on made from scratch freshness like Papa Murphy's. Because when you go all in, people notice. Go all in with the triple pet pizza for just eleven ninety nine. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. Indeed, you should use the promo code MONTY25, M-O-N-T-Y, MONTY25, to get 25% off your order. Um, I love that you guys are using our promo code. I love that you guys are ordering pizza. It's so good tonight. You have two big football games tonight uh, to take advantage of. You've got the NFL on Amazon Prime. Uh, by the way, did anybody see that Zacky Poo is going to get the start for the Jets? Excuse me, Zacky Poo? Yeah, the Zackinator. <laughs> what? I mean, it's it's Zacky Poo. Okay. Miami is at Cincinnati tonight um, on Amazon Prime. What's the number on that game? Cincinnati's three and a half over uh, Miami, the Dolphins. Dolphins. You like Tua? I do. You do? I need to see him against a legit defense, though. Well, Cincinnati's not a terrible defense. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and he's he needs to do it over a longer period of time as well. Well, and I also think that playing in Cincinnati on Thursday night, I believe they're wearing the white Bengal helmet tonight. Are they? Which I am a huge. Okay. okay. I am a yidge. <laughs> yidge. Mm-hmm. Yidge. Mm-hmm. Um, but you got to give them credit. Now, granted, granted, Miami's played two of their three at home. Their one, their one road win was the Ravens in that crazy comeback game. And they, they legit beat the Bills, whether Tua should have been back or not, 21-19. Right. And they sent the Patriots reeling 20-7. to Yeah. I keep, mean, this is probably keep going. Cincinnati, Cincinnati, the Bengals, are probably the best team they face this year yeah, on if, the road. If, I mean, if you get through the first six weeks and Tua's looking good, then I'll start to be a believer. Get through six weeks. We need to do a show on quarterbacks we believe in. Yeah. Because I also think this Lamar Jackson hate is it, it's now it's now bordering on slander. Yeah, I mean that kid's legit. He, yeah, the kid can play. There was a bite from Colin Cowherd that was made itself back to light mm-hmm. and did not age well. Yeah, where he talked about Sam Darnold being a better quarterback than Lamar Jackson Baba, would be. Baba. Yeah, no. Colin says a lot of things that don't age well. 
You know what I mean? Like I, yeah, he yeah, does. You know, uh, Gage Carter gives us a 99 cent tip. Appreciate that. Appreciate you, Gage. Uh, thank you so much. Kane Nuren says 48.17. Ooh, Kane Nuren's with you. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I I'm as I continue to work through the show here and think about. Oh, this score, don't don't what. Your lock is 45-17. I was going to go 45-10. I put the lead pipe. Stone cold locks. I, I'm, Are you telling me I have to edit this Yeah, now? I think you got to edit You're it, going 45-10. I think it's under. I think BYU covers and absolutely dominates this lead game. Lead pipe. Dude. Stone yeah. cold lock. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jansen says Zach Milfson. Gets it, get it right, Monty. <laughs> Milfson. <laughs> Is that Twitter's ever been going crazy? Is that ever going away? No. Do you not have the no 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 anymore? Not right now. I, we're I. No no yeah, no. I don't have that right now. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Oh wow. I, I, I have. You, you know, don't have the Lisa Wilson ground. Uh, I yeah. we have it on the other wow. computer. I you know wow. I, there's you know yeah wow. yeah. It's really despicable. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Giggity says I hope Tua doesn't hit his head again and make those back spasms act up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Come on, guy. Come on, guy. It's internal. Josh Lovern says Zach Wilson. Is Zach Wilson an elite NFL quarterback? No. Not to get way off the rails. Here, no, he's not. But you don't think he's elite yet? No. I don't think he is either. No. I think he... I think He's not elite yet? He's not even in that conversation. But he needs to mature. Right. And the problem is, I don't know that the... I think... I don't know that Zachy Poo's the problem. I think the Jets are probably no, the, the problem. No, the problem for Zach Wilson is Joe Flacco had success while he was hurt. The problem for who? Zachy Poo. Thank you. Zach um, Milfson. Th Zach Milfson. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would agree with you. It doesn't, it's not a good look for Zachy Poo to go out and for yeah. Joe Flacco, who's 78 years old. Mm, yeah. And I think he uses a wheelchair now. When uh, I die, I'm going to paradise. Yeah. <laughs> like he, he close to death. Uh, that Joe Flacco comes out and, and they look better is a problem. And I mm -hmm. think Zach's got to mature into a guy who doesn't need to score a touchdown and be a hero highlight player every every snap. I think yeah. that's I think that's Milfson's problem. Now it's in my head. Now it's in my now I'm gonna have to say Zach Milfson like every single time. Daddy. Like <laughs> seriously. Still one of the best. Uh let's see. Where will Lamar and Lamar be next season? I don't know. I, I think it's way too early to Yeah, I think he's gonna be yeah. with the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. Uh chance it says I have Lamar Jackson in my work fantasy league. I'm currently in first to win a hundred bucks. Nice. I don't miss playing fantasy football. Do you miss playing no, fantasy football? I don't. I don't miss playing fantasy. I don't like. Not no. 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 It, I just okay. I I have to say. Yes. I just got this update that came across my phone, and this is uh -oh. ridiculous. So I get this update that says Chloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson <laughs> got secretly engaged. A month before he impregnated another woman behind her back. Why is that? A, you're getting like a, from who? From BuzzFeed, sending me sending me a random push notification. Uh, rando, please. I'm like, damn, dude. Like, how? Like, what? Why? I don't need Kardashian news in my life, man. Why? Because Kardashian news is always good news. Pause, bro. Pause. You're not a fan of the car. Uh, well, okay. So I think no. See, why do you? You bring up the he Kardashians. He got engaged secretly and then planted seed in another woman's garden. Planted seed? Behind Who talks her like that? back. Who says things like that? Uh, you do? I said germinating. That motherfucker don't miss, right? I mean, man. Listen, Tristan Thompson. This is the thing I don't understand. You're Tristan Thompson. With all due respect, I know you're tall. You wear a size 38 shoe. I'm sure it's mighty. But who are you going to be when you're not a basketball player, when you can't say I'm an NBA player? I am your father. Let's smash. Like, <laughs> if you can't say that, and you're Tristan Thompson, who are you? Uh, you're just a guy who pays child support to, like, 12 women. That's an issue. Like, that's the prop. That's You, it, you had Kardashian money. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing that maybe Chloe needs a reality check. The, the Lamar Odom situation wasn't enough for you? Mm-hmm. No, Where wasn't. you found him almost dead in a whorehouse, legitimately, and so you went to Tristan Thompson, who might as well be dead because he was—I don't know where he found this chick. But are you kidding me? Yeah, come on, come on. And by the way, the Kardashians. 
I will just say, from Ray J to Kanye to Tristan Thompson, I know the customers who have shopped you at that store. One, marry one, no, I'm one. not. Go. No, I don't. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Hey, close. I'll go and get Kawhi. All I'm saying is, Devin Booker, you're on the clock. <laughs> marry that Kardashian money. If you're going to do it, do it. Marry it. Right. Don't, you know. Right. But I'm not into the Kardashians. Me I'm either, not. dude. I mean, I just am not. I can't. It's why Britney Spears has fallen off my radar. Yeah. Because I was head over heels with that one. Woo! You know. It just, Zach, what, okay. <laughs> Bro, Zach will have a great year. 28 TDs and 2,800 yards is a great year. That is some average-ass football. Uh, Jansen says Zach is an elite, but he isn't as bad as Mitch Trubisky. Stop it. Do not slander Mitch Trubisky in my presence. Maserati Mitch is awesome. Thanks. Uh, Pete Davidson has been my favorite customer at Kim's. Wow. At Kim's <laughs> Bunchton. <laughs> Pete Davidson has been my favorite customer at Kim's Bunchkin. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, by the way, did you see the update on Giselle's Bunchton oh, boy. and Tom Brady? Oh, boy. Giselle and Tom Brady, so they leave Tampa because of Hurricane Ian. Right. They leave Tampa and they go to Miami to ride it out. The Bucks pay for the player and his family to go to Miami. They're living apart in Miami. <laughs> like, I don't understand this. Like, at what point does Giselle's Bunchton be like, hey, it's Tom Brady, I probably ought to figure it out. No, but I will with your wife. Who's got who's got more to lose? <laughs> got him. Who's got more to lose? You know, like that's the I question. I think they're past that. I don't I don't know that it's a more to lose thing. I think it's more it's a it's a you know, do you really want to wreck your relationship o- over whatever the issue is? Like Maybe. that's what I struggle with. Quentin Randall says music sounds like public domain does it match your tone you are way better than the music i know and i'm better looking than the music too you know if you okay. look at it in a waveform anyway uh my jazz fan says the kardashians needing a reality check you think i'm so tired of all those people <laughs> they have done nothing for fame nothing. nothing well wasn't her wasn't the original kardashian i can't remember the mom's name Chris, Cardet, Chris Jenner, it, whatever. She was originally banging OJ's attorney, and then Pop I think, yeah, and then I think she sipped at OJ's chalice, uh-huh. and all of that. Right. Like that's where their fame comes from, like mm. the OJ trial. And I think. he will every single time. Right, the late Bob Kardashian who passed away, right, was was originally OJ's lawyer and was on that team. That's where their fame comes from. But what are they famous for? Like, I mean, at least Kim's trying to get guilty people out of jail. Like, I'll give her credit for that. But what else have they done? Uh, honestly, besides showing that booty on Instagram, what else have they done? Nothing. That's And that's my point. Like, I don't understand. I've never understood that. I, I don't understand it. But it's fine. Uh, M. Morris says Flacco has three wins in the last 20 games he started. Yeah. Yeah, nobody cares about the other 17. Yeah. I, I don't disagree. Uh, Gage Carter says this year has shown that Trubisky was never the problem for the Chicago Bears. By the way, I'm a Bears fan also, Monty. Sorry, Gage. Welcome to our pain train. Um, look, as far as Mitch Trubisky goes, before we get back to whatever it is we're going to get back to, um, <laughs> <laughs> as far as Mitch Trubisky goes, Mitch isn't the solution or the problem. Right. And this is ultimately what what it comes down to. Mitch Trubisky's not a difference maker. Mm-hmm. I think the issue in Pittsburgh right now is he doesn't have guys who can ca- catch the football. Right. They dropped way too many passes. He's not the problem. He's also not the solution. The problem is the young guy they have also isn't the solution, but he went to pit. So everybody wants him to play. Yeah. With the Bears, the issue was that idiot head coach wouldn't build a system. His to, name is Nagy, please. Whatever. Matt Schmagy would not build a system to play to Mitch Trubisky's strengths. So you see Trubisky in Pittsburgh, and it just – you're seeing that he has ability, but you don't have guys that can catch the football. Right. And they've actually kind of sculpted a little bit of that system to help him, but then the worst of Mitch Trubisky comes out. He can be wildly inaccurate for a drive. Mm -hmm. 
So he overthrows guys and it winds up in the third row. But then when he puts it on a guy's numbers, the guy drops it because Juju is in Kansas City. He's not in Pittsburgh. Right. Those are the issues. If Mitch Trubisky's throwing the Heinz Ward, is he a better player? Well, not today because Heinz is fat and old. But in Heinz Ward's is prime? Yes. Yes. If he's got legitimate receivers, yes, he's better. If TJ Watt's healthy, Mitch Trubisky's a better player. Yeah. Because their defense is better. There's just a confluence of free passing going on in Pittsburgh. And I don't know that it's Mike Tomlin's fault, but not to go way off the rails here, but this is why you don't hire defensive guys to be head coaches. This is why, right? Like you look at the I offense. You know it all. Well, you look at the offense in Pittsburgh. Look at our Chicago Bears. Justin Fields is a bust. Wow. Justin Fields is not that dude. He's not that guy. And I listen. I have trouble with that. Well, I have trouble with with Justin Fields. He sucks right now. He is bad. With what to work with, though, man. He's like, got. He's on. got. Got. He, like, do you understand that Cole Komet? I think has one last their week. He caught his first catch of the line year. Line is garbage, right? Dude. But he was brought in because their offensive line didn't need to be even good. He's supposedly Justin Fields in Chicago. You okay, bro? What just happened? My knee got hit by Did a sniper. Did Ditka just roll up and smack you? I hurt my knee like a month ago playing basketball, and I'm like 99%. <laughs> but, man, there's that time where you just, you know how you just move to the left to let some gas go, and all of a sudden the knee's you like, You moved oh. to the left to let some gas. Did you just admit, admit that you crop dusted the set? No, crop dusting means I would have walked through Jesus. it. Jesus. Anyway, I let you drive one day and all of a sudden you think you're in control. The point is... He's an assassin. You look at Justin Fields, he's supposed to be a guy who can throw on the run. He can't. They won't let him throw. I think he's probably got under 50 pass attempts on the year. Like, it's it's a joke. They don't believe in him. He doesn't believe in them. He's no different than every other shitty quarterback the Bears have had for my entire life. Yeah. Honest to God, go through the history of the Chicago Bears. They've never had a franchise-level quarterback it real. in the modern era of Chicago Bears football. Call it 1975 forward. I'm not even joking. Jimmy Mack was probably the last franchise-level guy. But he wasn't even a franchise guy. Jim McMahon, let's be honest about who Jimmy Mack is, and nobody loves Jimmy the way I do. That's my guy, right? Yeah. He was always hurt. His greatest moments are, are of a bit. Like, look at the Minnesota game back in 86. 85, I guess it would have been technically. He comes off the bench because he's got a lacerated kidney, throws a touchdown to Willie Galt. He's a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. The guy was always hurt, and he was a he was a mediocre quarterback in his prime. Yeah. His personality, his headbands, his sunglasses, his beer, his bicycles. That's why he's a legend in Chicago. Oh, by the way, he also played really well in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay, I feel better. I feel like do I... Do you? Was that was that kind of a, a, a therapy session? Like, you know... Do, but do not ask me to talk Bears football. It's really despicable. The worst things you can say is, hey, who's going to trade for Patrick Kane and is Justin Fields a viable quarterback? Off. That's an issue. Patrick Kane should be a, a, a Blackhawk for life, dude. Josh Lovren, I would expect nothing less than... I swear to God, you did not just reference him as Mazda Mitch. I'm offended. I mean, I, I'm, I'm absolutely offended. She took offense. Yeah, you're damn right I did. Mazda, Mitch. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Uh, Jansen says Kanye is fuming at your comments right now, Monty. Well, yeah. I I hope he is. Why did Kim Kardashian hook up with Kanye West? Like, she doesn't need the money. She did need the shoes. Mm. Yeezy slides are putridly ugly. Why did you hook up with Kanye? Oh, because they wanted to name their, their baby Northwest. Wow, Dad. Well, wow. His name is Kanye West. What could we name our baby? Penelope West? Donnie, please. Doesn't really have the ring. Um, Shakira West? No. Donnie, you're out of your element. Uh, Orenthal James West? So you no. have no frame of reference here, Donnie. I don't know. <laughs> Screw it. Let's go with Southwest. What no. the fuck are you talking about? I hate Arizona. Uh, how about East West? No. Northwest? Done. Put it on the baby certificate. Northwest. Like, is that the process you go? Penelope. What name matches with Kardashian? I don't know. Tiffany? I'm, I'm, no, Chlamydia. Anyway. Wow. Uh, what? That's a legitimate baby name. Correct the mundo. I could be wrong. 
Uh, Arlington Bear says, sup, fellas, back in Salt Lake City. What did I miss in the last hour? Well, I um, missed Mazda Mitch and Justin Fields as a bust. And apparently babies are named Chlamydia. <laughs> MH5 says you run Justin Fields until his legs fall off or are torn off by the D-line. Throw the football. What are you talking about? Seriously, what are you talking about? Hey, man, I'd love for him to throw the football. They Matt Eber flustered already is not able to do that, apparently. Like, you hired a dude. Yes, you did. You hired a defensive guy. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Best best quarterback in the NFL right now. Who do you think, who's the best quarterback? Josh Allen. Josh Allen has all kinds of infrastructure around him to be a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. Invest in wide receivers. Has one of the best wide receivers. Has three of the better running backs. A, a unbelievable offensive line. Worst quarterback in the NFL. Mm. Right now, it's Justin Fields. He is legitimately the worst quarterback in the NFL. Ah, buddy in Atlanta. No. He, Marcus Mariota is better than Justin Fields. Mm. I'm not. I'm not even being like a Homer know, Bears man. fan. I think it's yeah. Are you being you? You would take Justin Fields I, over who? I think that Justin Fields is working with a pile of trash, and he's new to the league. God, and there's not much he can do about it. I know that it's the day after National Sons Day, God. But why did you not give me a daughter? What the fuck does one thing have to do are you with the other? Serious right now. Justin Fields over who? Who are the worst Sam Darnold or Justin Fields? Stop asking me who the worst quarterback is and start asking me what are the worst situations are. Okay. Sam Darnold or Justin Fields? You're right, Sam Darnold. There's there's no doubt about like I'm 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 not even but you're, joking. You're, it's but you're missing the point here. You you can't even throw Justin Fields into comparisons Goff? because he has he has nothing to work with. Zach man. Wilson or or Justin Fields? I would take uh, Justin Fields, man. I'm you sorry. You would? Yes, yes, yes. I yes. Well, I know I don't know anything about the NFL, but Justin Fields sucks. But you're you're like you're he's playing terrible. Both sides of the fence. I'm not. Yes, bro. you are. No, okay, how am I playing both because sides of the fence? Because you're saying you just said, "Hey, he's got nothing to work with, but he's a terrible quarterback." That you can't. They're not mutually exclusive. The situation makes it incredibly difficult for a guy who's what two years in now to Let's develop. Look at well, but okay. in the stats, but it's like not you can even go down it's not stats. I'm just looking at like the important quarterback stats. I don't care about touchdowns. I really don't care You're, about but interceptions. You can't honestly, go to completion percentage and 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 I, use that as a stat. I just look at attempts. His high for attempts this year is 17. So how is he supposed to develop? He because they don't. He's completing seven of eleven and eight of seventeen. And when I say completing, and unfortunately, and you know this as well as anybody, I watch pretty much every snap of their games. He cannot throw the ball effectively. He is a guy who overthrows you. How many throws has he bounced this year? I don't know. The only guy I would take Justin Fields over is Trey Lance. That's it. I'm not taking him. I'm taking Zach. Like, fine. Find me the worst quarterback positions in the in situations. I'm trying to find Trevor a guy. Lawrence. I would – oh, Trevor Lawrence is developing. Trevor Lawrence is growing. Trevor Lawrence damn well may be a franchise quarterback. And, by the way, who's his head coach? Doug Peterson. Well, but that's my point. Like, you look at the situation. Like, give Justin Fields a better situation, and what happens to him? Magically, he starts to develop. Like, that's my problem with this conversation. I don't I don't think that it is as dire as you make it out to be. Wow. I look at – I look at – like, if we just look at their – if we just look at their numbers. Cole Komet is a travesty – that he is not being used more. But I think part of it is, I think a big part of it is, is Justin Fields doesn't know how to get him the ball because he is a two-read guy. Okay, Cole Komet's covered. Jimmy's covered. I'm going to panic and run. Oh, Cole Komet's open. I'm going to throw it over his head. That's really what their offense has been. And by the way, the good news is they've actually been running the football better. Mm -hmm. And then David Montgomery gets hurt again. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm telling you on Justin Fields, I look at his his... Like Khalil Herbert is run averaging 7.3 yards per carry, and he's got 33 attempts. So this is not like a small sample size. Like 33 attempts at 7.3 yards is is good. I'm good with that. But if you look at his receivers, Equinemius St. Brown can play in the NFL. There, there is no question about that. Dante Pettis should probably not be a wide receiver. He should be a kick returner. He's his number two target. I agree with that. But I look at Cole Komet. 
Um, I look at Darnell. How is Darnell Mooney? Darnell Mooney has three, uh, four receptions in, a, in 11 targets. Darnell Mooney, who is a legit good receiver. Mm-hmm. This is you're the, you can't blame everything on the team. Okay. You I just I just don't think you can and and I know I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I I I get it that I get it that I am I am one of the only people that and Luke Getzey, by the way, by the way, and again, I look at Luke Getzey. Luke Getzey's not a terrible offensive coordinator. And he's a guy, in my opinion, that if Aaron Rodgers thrives under Luke Getze mm-hmm. and Justin Fields is terrible under Luke Getze, is it Luke Getze's fault? Well, he's probably not responsible for Aaron Rodgers and the height because Aaron's an elite quarterback. But are you telling me that Justin Fields shouldn't be a better quarterback? That Justin Fields doesn't have any responsibility in the situation. But where we disagree is sitting here saying that Justin Fields is the worst quarterback in the league because I don't believe that. I think that Justin Fields is a great athlete. He can move incredibly well, and he doesn't get great opportunity to develop. It's just not like it's not there. It hasn't been there. There's a reason why the Bears haven't had a franchise-level quarterback. Here's one, Geno Smith. I'd take Justin Fields over Geno Smith. I would not. Although I think Geno is one of the better number twos in this league. He's not a number one. He's not, I agree a, he's not a number one. I don't know. Geno's top ten in QBR in the NFL, and they, you want to talk about a team but that's, that's a, got issues? That's a faux stat. I mean, come on. They've got issues. Ken Williams says, "Look at Jake; it's priceless." K. Nuren says, "Zach is coming back to a bad O line. Will be running for his life." Yeah, sure. Geno Smith with Alex Caruso should be the logos for their respective leagues. I want it. There you go. Rhett Wilson says Fields won't hit 3,000. He won't hit 2,000 yards. I don't know. We've we've probably gone too far here. But do you see, this is what happens. And you should know better than to bring up Justin Fields in the Bears. This is Gage's fault, and it's not my fault. You need to knock it off, Gabe or Gage, whatever the hell his name was. That's his fault. Not my fault. I mean, I don't know. know. I don't know. That's Um, pretty much self-explanatory. Biggest stories in sports this morning presented by our good friends at Barbecue Pit Stop, barbecuepitstop.com. Make sure you get to one of their five Utah locations because I'm telling you, if you're not going to Barbecue Pit Stop, you're doing it wrong. Um, They are absolutely the grill smoker guru guys, but please stop using propane and barbecue briquettes. Mm. I need some Kingsford. No. I need some lighter fluid. No, you don't. What you need is pellets and a plug, and you're good to go. That's what you get at Barbecue Pit Stop. I'm t- Get on the Traeger bandwagon. I'm a Traeger guy all the way. I love Traeger. I love the Ironwood 885. It is, I, it is easily the best grill thing setup I've ever had. I was intimidated by smokers. I, w- I didn't know how to use it. I thought I'd never know how to use it. I don't think it's that difficult now that I know. It's like, man, what was I worried about? You really just put the pellets in, plug it in, set the temperature, and use Wi-Fi technology. Yeah. You realize that smokers now have Bluetooth in them? Mm-hmm. Get it done. Savage. Uh, find Barbecue Pit Stop online, BBQ Pit Stop. Uh, find them in Logan, Layton, Lehigh, Salt Lake City, and St. George. And, oh, by the way, make sure you go in there and you say, hey, by the Monty Show, I heard about you on their show, that great, awesome, the biggest sports show in Utah. That's where I heard about you guys. And then ask them about the best seasoning for chicken wings. What's it called? Asada. For chicken wings. Yes. I'm telling you. Asada. It's freaking bomb. It will change your life. If you've ever been to a barbecue pit stop, it'll change your life. Kanai Johnson says, Oh, would pick Fields over Demarcus Russell, worst quarterback ever. Demarcus Russell. Yeah. Jamarcus Russell. Thank you. Uh, Ken Williams says, Jake, go buy Monty Pizza, then he will be happy. I'm not even hungry. Did you just call my guy fat? Yeah, wait, what? Did you just call my guy fat? fat? I mean, I am, but that's not the point. That's not the point. You know. Fat! K. Nuren is on the Zach Milfson bandwagon. If Zach had played the first three games, he would have 35 touchdowns and 3,500 yards on the year. Well. Okay. Okay. You know, he would not. He would not. Uh, Yeah. By the way, K is exactly right. Can everybody here give us a thumbs up and a like? Last one on quarterbacks in the NFL before we get back to the Big 12. Pac-12, I don't know. I think that Wilson gets hurt again. Hero ball boy needs to learn. Hero ball boy 
needs to learn how to play in, as an NFL quarterback. I would like to see him succeed, but I think it's realistic as the Kardashians. <laughs> I'll disagree. Here's a, here's a hurricane update. Marlon Shaw, sitting in a hotel in Lauderdale. It is bad on the West Coast, historically bad. This is going to take years to come back from quite literally. And Marlon, is your are Oof. do you live on the West Coast usually of Florida or like? Are what's you a your, Tampa guy? Or are you a yeah, Clearwater? What's your situation? Like, are you in the villages? Like, where are you? Um, where are you? Like, I'd love to know where you. If the West Coast got crushed. Yeah. I mean, now thankfully the storm missed Tampa for the most part. Um, and as we sit here and we watch the uh, the old television, and again set, when you say it missed Tampa, like you need to you know understand the eye of the, the storm, eye of the storm missed, missed Tampa. Tampa, to Tampa the south. still got lit up though. Yeah, it missed Tampa to the south. Yeah, uh, but you look at at Pinellas County. You look, I mean, the entire state of Florida is impacted by this. South Florida, uh, Miami. I mean, you look at from Grand Cayman, Cuba, the Bahamas. Yeah, dude. I mean, this storm is catastrophic and. The other thing that's so interesting is is that you have power lines that are above ground in Florida. Don't forget that. So it's going to take weeks to get power back online because they're saying for every one home that's put back on the power grid, four or five are coming off of the grid because of the storm. So you, there's just no way to catch up. I mean, it is, it is, in, it is incredible. Lopes fan Gabe says, uh, "Boars night out while lighting AP rub on those wings." Ooh. Then hit him with that honey barbecue wing dust. Boom. <laughs> well, you do know that. Because what did Gabe, what did Lopes fan Gabe do? He went to barbecue pit stop in Lehigh. And he got no, whoa, whoa, whoa. He what? flew out. Yes, he did. The barbecue pit stop in Lehigh. Let's keep it, you know, it's, you know, give the man his respect. It's what all the hoes do. They fly out. Uh, anyway, Estero, just south of Fort Myers, right where it hit. Oh, oh Jesus. Dude. Sorry to hear that, Marlon. Uh, I just heard Sarasota got hit hard. It got crushed. It got crushed. Tom Basilius, lots of insurance companies going bankrupt in Florida after this. Bro, well, show the clip. I mean, we have hurricane. We have a, a, a hurricane highlight down at the bottom there, uh, just like of the coast just getting just smashed, dude. Like, like you are. I mean, that's you're done. Like, oh, it's incredible. I mean, I don't even know what you say about. Like, look at the force. That's what always strikes me. Like, there's like, oh, storm surge, storm surge. But this is like flowing in, dude. I mean, it's crazy. It's cra and, and here's the thing I don't understand. You're putting reporters in the middle of this, which is crazy to me. Because I look at, look at that yacht. And this dude on this yacht yesterday trying to drive his way out of Fort Myers Harbor. And then like this story right here. It just came flying by. Cool. All right, you know what? <laughs> I think I'm just going to come in here for a second. Just give me a second. Jim, you all right? There. I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just, you just can't stand up. All right. All right, I'm just going to let you guys look at the pictures, okay? Bro, Jim Cantori on the Weather Channel. But why are you putting reporters out in this? Like, why do you feel because the need? Because it's a thing. Like, I'm sure that good old Jim wants to be out in it, too. Like, I don't, I like, let's, you know, I mean, there are people who like being in that stuff and reporting from nah, it. Nah, come on. Come, yeah, I, I mean, are you, are you seriously? Are you serious? I, I don't, I, I'm not putting anybody out in this on the Monty Show presented by the Advocates. UtahAdvocates.com. Like, I just don't know why we need reporters on the street. Like, he gets hit by a tree limb, dude. Yeah, bro. That wasn't a tree branch. That was a tree limb. Yeah. I mean, like, Hurricane Ian is destroying. There's houses. There's video of houses floating down the street. Oh, bro. hey, isn't that Karen and Tom's place? Well, it used to be. Like, so bad, bro. And, and you have Don Lemon last night on CNN. I flip over to Fox News. Same thing. Don Lemon got hit with a piece of aluminum siding Ooh. standing on the street in Tampa. Yeah. What are we doing? Why do we? Like, We're I don't... doing the news. Meanwhile, we got dudes sitting on top of their houses trying not to drown, and we're putting reporters in these situations. And these people yesterday in Tampa Bay in the harbor were because the storm sucks all the water out of Tampa Bay. Yeah. Right? The, because of the way it's spinning. 
It's quite literally, this hurricane is so big, it's sucking the water out of Tampa Bay. And so, yeah, let's, oh, cool, look, Tampa Bay's empty. Let's go put Jimmy and the kids in the bay. Like, why are you doing that? Like, the, this family had their kids in the mud at the bottom of Tampa Bay because they thought it was cool in a hurricane. <laughs> and I, I just, the video in Fort Myers of the, the storm surge rolling in, Gnar, and it just dude. looks like a tsunami as the water just takes over the street. It is so gnarly. And yet we're putting people out there. I, I don't get it. Sean Mirzinski, good morning. Born and raised in Southern California. Had to deal with fires and earthquakes. Can't imagine having to deal with that. We talked about this yesterday on the show. Yeah, man. And I'm just going to tell you again. I want nothing to do with this. I want nothing to do with it. Because what do you get when you look at how windy it is? When you see that, where's all your stuff? Floating down the street, being blown away, your roof's getting ripped off. I'll take an earthquake over a hurricane every yeah. single day. Yeah. Like, I mean, every single day. I will water take... the power of water is just insane. Like you're insane for doing this. Like I just can't even. And then look at Marlon Shaw. Lol, I'm retiring to Idaho in three years. Already have property bought, my man. Good for you, dude. Seriously, good for you. Good for you, man. Uh, My Jazz fan says reporters out there for viewership clicks. Viewerships click equal money. What do you wow. mean? Clicks equal money? <laughs> My name uh, hey, guys, can you like and subscribe? Yeah, can you give us um, a thumbs up, And just play please? our entire channel on repeat all day? Yeah, Thank can you. you just hit loop? Thank you. That'd, that'd be great. Thank you. That would be really awesome if you would do that. Uh, give us a like. Yeah, we, we, you know, all 160 of you that are here now, please hit the thumbs up button. That would really help the channel grow. I, I don't know. Again, I will just say, let's not put reporters there because the other thing that you got to remember is... Life has changed dramatically for human beings in Florida. I mean, it, it you're just not going to recover. And the 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 loss of wages, the loss of jobs, the the infrastructure. And the other thing that that is brutal about this is it impacts this. These storms impact the entire country because what do you get now? Oh, FedEx can't ship out of Memphis because of the storm. You're delayed a week. Um, you know, oh, hey, gas prices are going to go up because pipelines and, mm -hmm. hey, the cost of oranges just went up. It, yep. I mean, it's devastating. And I, I so I just hate when they do stuff like put put Jim Cantori out in the street to get hit. You know, like Man, that's it's dumb. just trashing bridges and yeah. stuff, dude. Fat Jesus says he's lucky he didn't get slammed by a Toyota Corolla. Yeah, dude. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, Mazda Mitch could have easily killed him. I doubt that. You know, Utah is a great place to live for natural disasters. Some fires here and there, and then some small earthquakes. Dallin, you ain't wrong. Having lived in, growing up in Chicago, I can tell you the worst thing in the world is waking up to that freight train of a tornado. It is, it's terrifying. Yeah. Is absolutely terrifying. Um, earthquake is PNW could mean volcano eruptions. In the Pacific Northwest could mean volcano eruptions. Gotcha. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I, I, the whole thing is just crazy. Yeah, man. I mean, it's... It, it, and I, again, when, when you introduce water, as far as natural disasters are concerned, no. that's where you lose me. Like, I just... Water is just such a devastating thing. They're talking about, like, how fires are breaking out because... Um, and you're look. We're looking at these shots on TV. Here's the thing, also about Utah. Our power lines are buried underground, and because there's so much new construction here, yeah. And power lines are buried underground. Yeah. So in Florida, where they have the power lines buried underground, which is not common, it is uncommon. It is rare because most of Florida is old construction, right? So you look at Utah and Florida. If the power lines are buried underground, the power's still on in Florida. And so now they're talking about, hey you know, getting federal grant money to bury power lines. And it's, I, you, I think you got to do how that. How do you not? This is the whole Texas, our, our grid froze thing. How do you, how are you not prepared? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, Ken Williams says, I take my Wyoming. Nothing happens here. Just snow, man. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Patrick Mann says best thing to come out of Utah. I 15. Hell yeah. You ain't wrong. Uh, Rhett Williamson, uh, Rhett Williams says Utah is the best. Just hate all the things people hate all the people moving in from other places. It's getting filled right now. It drives me crazy. And that's why we always joke. Like I joke on Twitter and Instagram a lot about how Utah sucks. Don't move here, but it's so beautiful here. Like, the thing that I enjoy so much, and I'm so thankful, uh, that Mrs. Monty will get in the car on a Saturday night and take a drive over guardsman pass and, Look at sunsets and de like it, it's awesome. Like you, you drive the mountains here and you can see deer. You can see yes. elk. You can see we saw a bear the other day. Like 
It's just amazing to me. But it's getting so over overrun. And we have a water shortage here. Like, don't come here. It, you, trust me, Utah sucks. Uh, Josh Lovren says, Wyoming has Yellowstone. Ken says, I'll deal with the snow. Yellowstone's amazing, by the way. If you, yeah, you know, if you haven't. Anyway, Tom Basilia says, lava greater than fire, greater than water, greater than wind. Could be. Could be. Uh, San Diego State Aztec says, didn't play you on loop yesterday, but I absolutely had to go back and watch the Mrs. Monty show highlights. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of comments about her kawaii imitation yesterday. <laughs> she was on one yesterday. She was. You know. Uh, Tom Basilia says, 215 is awesome, and we need another loop out west. Agreed. Just Agreed more, completely. Just more rocks on your windshield, man. You know. It is what it is. NY Jazz fan says there is a mass exodus from high cost states going to states like Utah, Tennessee, and Texas. My brother in law just moved to Nashville. So hopefully they didn't ruin those states too. They do. California, Arizona. I know a ton of people who left Arizona, including me. Um, California, Us. we, two O's and dickhead. Thank you. Uh, the Thank point you. is, Thank you're welcome. You. Yeah. Just trying to help mm -hmm. you spell what would I do without you? You know, uh, my point is. Is that Utah's great. I hope people don't come here. I really don't. Jeremy Bolton says Utah has a loud Subaru, has loud Subarus yeah. in Nashville. I mean, that's, you know, that's a fact of life here. And, you know, it just is, it's part of what you deal with. I mean, I, I, I would oh, never do that. I mean, so I don't. I, you if know. you're new to this show, young Skippy over here drives a Young Skippy. Drives a Subaru WRX STI. He has custom suspension on it. He's got custom exhaust. It's loud. Not as loud as it, it's not catless, but it's loud. Mm -hmm. So he takes his his girlfriend in the Subi to Zion National Park. One of the absolute escapes from reality. If you've never been to Zion, it's unreal. Mm -hmm. You can find like this space in Zion where you can just take a blanket take your sweetheart and have a picnic lunch. Unless some dude in a Subaru WRX STI with a custom exhaust, that guy, goes zooming through the park, loudly bouncing his exhaust note off of the walls at Zion. Listen, it was a good time. We had a huge fight over that on this show. A huge fight. You shouldn't do it. You absolutely shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken Williams says Mrs. Monty rocks but she likes green peppers exactly that's why we, we banned her from the show today mm -hmm. uh, NY Jazz fan says oh god what did you do well I just wanted to show everybody what did hopefully you do? it works I don't oh, know if it'll god. work I don't what know if it'll work do? I hope it works what did you do I hope it works he sent me a video clip it may not work I hope it does work will it work uh, let's see hello it, I think it's incoming incoming yeah. Okay. Well, I'm trying to find it right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'll find it. What did you send the video of? The video of me, you know, rolling through the park. Uh, you are such a jerk. Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. It's, uh, I, I have to find it. Okay. In my downloads because I have way too many things. No, it's not going to work. Our, our replay right there. It's a movie file. Ah, uh, okay. It's not an MP4. Whatever. You fine. Know. It's fine. It's fine. But uh, anyway, a couple more, and then we need to get back to uh, Football 50 in nine minutes. Thanks to our good friends uh, at uh, Papa Murphy's Pizza. Lopes Fan Gabe says, I hope Jeremy Bolton and Fat Jesus never run uh, against each other for mayor of the Monty Show because I have no idea who I would vote for. Hey. Absolute legends. You know. Who is, who is the most popular listener on this show? Well, I mean, that title was held by Corey Grocock for, you know, ages. But... <laughs> Still, dude, dude still retired. Easy, still easily the best name we've ever had on the yeah, show. Yeah, Corey Grocock, literally the guy's name, Corey Grocock, came onto this show Grocock. probably six, eight months ago now or whatever it was. We were giving away an Xbox Series S at that time, and he literally said, hey, if I can get 50 votes, I win the Xbox. And he got 50 votes, and he won the Xbox. And, and then he promptly, retired, he promptly retired from the show. So, yeah, I guess we kind of do need a new mayor of the show. I mean, who's the mayor of the Monty show? Yeah, I don't know. It May, was mayor of the comment section. It was Tanner, but Tanner has gotten a little uppity. Yeah, he's gotten a little. You know, he's he's been trying to keep up with the Joneses too much. You know, he has like he they ditched. He, so again, if you and I'm sorry to be Renette. Last yesterday was National Sons Day. Mm -hmm. Like my son. Right. Right. Um, 
but we were we're very busy. Like it's not like I have a whole lot of hours to be chilling on Twitter every day. Yeah, we 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 are doing a lot, and you will see most of that come to fruition in probably a week. The next ten days, yeah. I would think. Yeah. Anyway, the point is. Yeah. So last night at nine thirty, I put a nice little post up on Twitter, talking about you know, hey, this is my son. We've been a lot of places. Love you, dude. Great. Put a picture up there. Not twenty seconds after it posted. This is at 9.30 at night. Tanner Pummer's like, oh, yeah, way to post that with only two and a half hours left in the day, but whatever. It's like, what are you talking about? Was there a time limit? <laughs> what are uh, you doing? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm glad to see Tanner has notifications on, though. Okay, here we go. Jeremy Bolton says, uh, Lopes fan Gabe, you'd be my running mate, and Tanner will run our campaign. Our motto would be, hey, guys, 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 Caruso sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Jesus said loud cars are compensation. Well, mine actually is not that loud, honestly. Oh, I thought you were going to say that big. Uh, Jansen says Tanner. Tom Basilius says everyone is finding serenity in the beauty of the national parks, and here comes Captain Muffler bumping Taylor Swift as loud as he can. Bumping Taylor Swift. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> As loud as he can to ruin this family's vacation and solidify the divorce. Jesus Christ. Well, like, come on. Are you happy with yourself now? Apparently. I mean, I, you know, I, listen, I had a good time. Okay. Ah. Like, I'm not going to sit here and run from it. I enjoyed myself. Oh my God. That was amazing. That, that was absolutely amazing. Did you just send me something? No. Oh, okay. That was amazing. <laughs> solidify the divorce and you do bump taylor swift Get the hell out of here with that ah that's the tom my guy i mean that was that was i mean i'll give you credit if you're running for mayor that was pretty damn good eric c says tanner dallin sproul says tanner Plummer, biggest troll dallin sproul says but i'll take mayor because tanner isn't on right now mm-hmm uh, Eric C says Tanner and Ruffs. Uh, K Ken Williams says this show rocks. It's funny as hell. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> New York jazz fan says I would vote for Jeremy Bolton. Tanner's gotten salty, but I still like, Oh, him. <laughs> Hey, Tanner's gotten salty. Fat Jesus says I'm already declaring voter fraud. <laughs> 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 voter fraud. Eric C says James Knight. Oh, James Knight is always salty. He is always okay. Salty. Now I'm trying to send it to you. This this file should work. This okay. file should work. Here we go. Well, because the people need to see it. I mean, they if we're going to have some no, discussion about it, they need to see it. No, they don't. This is completely unplanned. You know. God. Well, no it, idea how loud this is, by the way, either. You know, because since my car is so loud, you know, it's just some. You know. Okay, let me ask in the comments. Do you guys want to hear Jake's car? Yeah, destroy? let's take a vote. Let's take. Do a you want to hear Jake's car destroy the ambiance of Zion National Park? Let's take a vote. Fat Jesus says, "Shake it off, Jake." Oh, I'm good. I'm I'm just saying, like, I, you know, hey, it is what it is. Justin know? Salas has never apologized for listening to Taylor Swift, Jake. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> I do what I can do for the show. You know, Fat what I mean? Jesus says, "As your mayor, I promise more food talk, more Mrs. Monty shirt shots, and blue cheese for everybody." <laughs> 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 oh, Rhett Williams says 100% show it. Okay. Gage Carter says, absolutely. Dallin Sproul says, show it. <laughs> Tom Basilia <laughs> says, no, don't want it. Okay. Okay. Are you happy now? What are the people saying? Do you feel better now? Yeah, what are the people saying now? Come on. Josh uh Joshua Mo says great acoustics. Yeah, right? Josh Leveren says that was lightning. Um Kurt Meyer says Greenpeace will bot the program if we show pollution in national <laughs> parks. <laughs> Ah, Jansen says, oh. uh, show it, even though I already saw the video that was posted. Yeah. You probably saw that. Yeah. You know, 
yeah. is what it is. Lopes man, Gabe says, if that clip isn't a drop in the next 17 seconds, Jake is fired. <laughs> Exactly right. Uh, Jeremy Bolton says, that sound of my serenity leaving my soul. Well, you know. Do you feel better about yourself? I, I'm not denying it was fun. I had a great time. I'm... <laughs> I had a great time. I mean, you know, that that's just me. You see, I'm a guy of simple things. Guys, <laughs> everybody agrees you had fun. Yeah. It's a, I'm not denying I had fun destroying people's lives and the environment. <laughs> no, fuck them. What do I care? STI, baby. Saudi stooge. Look at the wing <laughs> on this car, man. Hey, look at this thing. <laughs> I mean, you could go kite surfing off that trunk yeah. list. Yeah. Come on. Nobody, nobody denies you had fun. The point is you destroyed a national park. I didn't park. destroy a national park. Don't <laughs> don't exaggerate. How many trees did you kill? None. None. Well, I mean, you know, I didn't help anything, but nobody died. It's not like it's it's catless and polluting more than any other car. By like, the way, how, how far over the speed limit were you? Uh, no comment. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Idiots. Duh. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like 15 miles an hour to me. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, totally. You're such a jerk. Snooka says, yes, I'd love to hear the loss of $20 down the drain to sound like you're going 80 miles Yeah, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> uh, oh, Ken says he woke up every animal for miles. Yeah. So one day Jake pulls up in front of the crib, right? Right. And we live in we live in a nicer part of daybreak, right? Right. Uh, Kick me outside. You know, How about that? Right now, we live on the island at daybreak, you know. And um, Jake pulls up in his car, comes in the house, does the show. He's leaving, and an old man waddles out from his from his. Hey, man. Stupor. Hey, man. Uh, is that your car? Excuse hey me, man. son. Hey, so, excuse me, son. Is that your car? Oh, you mean the one that I'm getting into that you know is my car? Yes. Is that your car? That thing's too loud. Could you not, like not floor it through the neighborhood? I'm trying to sleep. Jake's like, screw you. <laughs> Move to Florida. I ain't got time to talk about this. We got to do football 50. Hurry up. There's a hurricane. Move to Florida. Nothing? I'm working here. You give me no credit for that. Stay in your lane. That was pretty good, though. I'll give you credit for that. Football 50, 10 of the hour. Every hour on the Monty Show presented by Papa Murphy's Pizza. Download the app. It's super easy. Do what our guy Cody Strickland did, the vice mayor of the Monty Show. And uh, see, by, mayor, by, whoa, hey. Whoa, hey. Vice mayor, whoa. mayor, since whoa. people are electing themselves mayor. Wait, so we said Jeremy's the mayor. Yeah, Jeremy one? Bolton's the mayor. Uh, okay. All right. You know. Um, Co Cody Strickland already ordered his pizza. Going to be ready at 515. Let's we'll, go. we'll do the same thing, and we're going to use promo code MONTY25. Skew the results, man. Skew the data. Monty25 is your promo code at uh, Papa Murphy's Pizza. The biggest stories in sports right now, the BYU Cougars. Cougar up, baby. Uh, I don't know. Um, Cougars are a 24-point favorite on ESPN tonight against Utah State in Provo. Jake, do they cover? Yeah, no, they, they do. Don't. They're not covering yeah, 24. Yeah, they will. Yep. They're not covering 24, but they are going to win big. And one of the things we've been talking about this morning is TV audiences and the fact uh, that BYU has been one of the largest draws on television through the first four weeks at 4.58 million. No, uh, no, no, 556. Five, Can I finish? No. Can I finish? No. At 4.58 million, even USC is behind BYU, who's at 5.56 million. Yeah. It's a pretty good number. It is. It's right? impressive. I mean, I think it's it's. I, I think people think people don't watch BYU football, which is beyond me. Well, apparently they do because on ESPN 2's late night slot, Pac-12's not after dark. Wyoming and BYU have had the biggest audience this year at 609,000 MFers watching their game. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty incredible. I think that's a big tip of the cap to BYU. What do you expect TV-wise tonight? Yeah, I mean, I would expect over a million. I think you're, you're probably, yeah, in that 1.1, 1 1.2 you know, number because it is Thursday night and the NFL is on, so you kind of got to take that into consideration. But this is that tipping point we always talk about with streaming and NFL yeah. is that, yeah. hey, 
you know what? Maybe people aren't going to watch so much NFL because it's on Amazon Prime. Maybe ESPN. ESPN, the mothership. Yeah. The four-letter uh, gets a bigger audience for BYU and Utah State because they're not going to tune into streaming for the NFL. I think that's a big part of this conversation, especially in, in you know the, the parlance of where we are in college football and the yeah. atmosphere and the money that's being generated off of these streams. I mean, if it is in fact true that Amazon pulled 15 million viewers on week one of Thursday Night Football, I mean, that's a pretty good pull. Yeah. That's a pretty good pull. And I would think that more viewers are going to watch NFL than they are college football. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it'll be interesting. I think the TV numbers. Yeah, the competition between streaming and TV is 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 fascinating to me. I mean, I, there's a lot that goes into that, but I, I yeah, I, I BYU is going to have a good night. I mean, no way around that. Ruff's official says, "How does Oregon have double BYU numbers?" Well, it's pretty simple. They played Georgia. Yeah, I mean that Georgia game was a massive number uh, that Oregon pulled. But I mean, are you guys comfortable watching streaming? Is streaming now part of your thing? Because for me. With ESPN Plus, it's it's part of my thing. It has been. It will be. Like, I have no problem going to Amazon Prime to watch the Well, NFL. and I think that Amazon, what Amazon knows is everyone has Prime accounts. Over half of Americans have Prime accounts. So, and then how many more are watching off of that Prime account? So, you know, that I mean, you're going to get numbers. It's just what it is. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, man. By the way, Miami-Cincinnati, is that a compelling matchup? Yeah, that's a good matchup. I think Miami people... Second-tier kind of game, though. But Floridians, I think, are going to struggle. You're going to well, lose yeah. TV audience in Florida because oh, of Hurricane Oh, you mean from Ian. a ratings thing. Yeah, I well, mean, yeah. ratings-wise, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, because of the hurricane, I think you're not going to get it's as real. many. But... And, and how many people stream Amazon Prime on their phone? I would say a lot, so maybe not as much. But if you only, you know, if, if you're in Florida, you probably have more access to ESPN than you do Amazon Prime, I would, I, I would guess, right? I mean... Probably. You, you look at the advent of the cell phone and the way it's changed the game, I would think you would. I, it'll be really interesting. And by the way, I don't think Miami and Cincinnati has mass appeal. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it's, it's gonna like draw a huge, a huge number. Yeah, I mean it's I not think, a huge number. I think yeah. BYU and Utah State will be the dominant program in the state of Utah tonight. Yeah. And I think on the West Coast, I think I think it'll be a huge number. I think it'll be one point three million people will watch that game. Yeah, agreed. So we'll see. Uh Josh says, how does Washington State have a bigger number than BYU, Dallin? Because I think Washington State has a much larger T V audience. hmm And who cares why, right? Like whether it's Pullman or whether it's Seattle. I mean the footprint, if you look at this number, look at Washington State number two at six point one nine million. Yeah. I mean, now, your schedule has a lot to do with this. I think the schedule has a lot to do with why BYU's there. It's not about how good you are. You have to understand that. Like, on some level, for teams like Washington State, it's not about, hey, how good are is Washington State this year? It's partially about, you know, where they're playing, who they're playing, what time they're playing. Like, TV ratings and that business is, a, is just a different beast, frankly. You know, it's not as simple as, hey, is Washington State good this year? You know, it's a different it's a different conversation. No, and I, I think when you look at Washington State, they're having a good year at three and one. Um, you played at Wisconsin on Fox. You played Oregon on Fox. You know, like I mean, you you you've you've had some really big games, and I think when you look at the the total TV numbers, I mean, obviously the opposition is involved in that. Wisco's a huge audience. I think without question, Oregon's a huge audience. So. Um, you know, I don't think, I don't think that it's one of those things where you're you can just write that stuff off. That's my opinion. I think you look at the opposition. I think BYU's up there because BYU's played big programs. I think Arkansas and Notre Dame. That Notre Dame BYU game is going to draw probably three million people. Would be my guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a huge pull. So we'll see. I I don't know. I think we'll see how how all this plays out. You, you have to be relevant. Mm-hmm. I think Washington State and Oregon are relevant. That that Oregon-Washington State game was a nice TV number because that was a great game to watch. People yes. stayed longer. Yes. Well, right? and the Oregon comeback, and, yeah, I mean, you had a lot of play. I mean, these numbers are not surprising to me. This number is a little surprising to me. That 600,000 people in a late window on ESPN2 is tremendous. Yeah. It's absolutely tremendous. Football 50-10 of the hour. Every hour on the Monty Show is presented by Papa Murphy's Pizza. No one goes all in on made-from-scratch freshness like Papa Murphy's. Because when you go all in, people notice. Go all in with the Triple Pet Pizza for just eleven ninety nine.
Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. Yep, Papa Murphy's Pizza. Make sure you order it tonight for the football games, no matter what you're watching. Papa Murphy's is a great compliment, especially those take and bake chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. Absolutely get them while they're hot on the Papa Murphy's app. Use the promo code MONTY25 to get 25% off your order of $25 or more at Papa Murphy's Pizza. The Monty Show presented by the Advocates, Utah Advocates. Dot com. Jake, the biggest story in sports this morning is the Pac-12 on the verge of collapse. How likely is it that a year from now the Pac-12 is is still in existence? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's, you know, not super likely. I think that, you know, I guess a year from now it's probably still around, but I think inside of three years I, I, I think there's a real chance that the Pac-12 is not around, and that's simply because of the dynamics at play and, and how the leadership in the Pac-12 are handling this. You know, you, you wind the clocks back probably 10 years to when Larry Scott started as commissioner, and, you know, you've been on Pac-12 Network, uh, on Dish Network, and it's it's frustrating because most people don't have Dish. That's the thing. And so you combine a bad TV deal then with a, a, a commissioner that just spent loads and loads of money on real estate, private jets, like everything that's not even necessary to be successful. He gets let go. You bring in a guy in George Klyovkov who is incredibly arrogant about the conference and thinks that the conference is the best thing since sliced bread. And you're you're in a position where you're not doing the things you need to do to survive. So you combine those that that situation with George uh, and how they kind of go about representing the conference with the fact that the Big Ten is an absolute media distribution rights powerhouse, and it kind of sets up this sort of stage or chapter in the Pac-12 conference's history where it doesn't look good for you because the Big Ten is just waiting for you to collapse. The Big 12 is going to pick up what's you know left after the Big Ten takes their teams. And the path to the Pac-12 dissolving is very clear. Yet here we are talking about you know, oh, well, we don't need a distribution deal or we do need a distribution deal and it's a billion and a half dollars and nothing less. Like it just... I just get tired of the arrogance. That, to me, is why yeah, for sure. you're not going to be around in three years because you just are living in an alternate reality, it seems like. Yeah, and I think the the other thing is that graphic we were just using on uh, Football 50 presented by Papa Murphy's Pizza. I think the reason that this graphic right here, this tweet, is so significant is if you look at all of the, the teams that are in this graphic, right? Mm -hmm. Every one of them is impacted by the... Pac-12, Big 12 expansion. Yeah. Every one of them is in impacted by the decisions that the Big 10 makes. These are the biggest TV audiences through four weeks, right? So when you look at all those schools, every one of them is involved here. And I, I think that the, the story is that it's not when, or, or if, excuse me, it's when the, the Pac-12 collapses. I think that is the big story here. I think when you look at uh, what the Pac-12 has done and how the Pac-12 has damaged itself. It's only strengthened the Big 12 and the Big 10. But I also think the Mountain West is a huge part of this conversation because I think when you look at the Mountain West, obviously this is a conference in transition. And you look at the fact that Craig Thompson is really no longer the commissioner. He's commissioner de facto until the end of the year. Mm -hmm. They're going to bring in a new commissioner. And I think if the, the Pac-12 folds, when it folds, I think Oregon State and Washington State there's a real good chance those two schools end up in the Mountain West. And I think if you're San Diego State, one of the things we've consistently heard and um, we were hearing it last night was that San Diego State has been reticent to really get very far into negotiations with the Big 12 because they believe that the Mountain West is going to grow in strength and prominence. And if, the, if I'm San Diego State, you know what? I actually agree with that. I think San Diego State is a better fit in the Mountain West Conference than they would be in the Big 12 because San Diego State is not necessarily an athletic institution that's going to be a powerhouse in either basketball or football. Certainly not against Big 12 competition, but you look at what's in the Mountain West, there's no reason that San Diego State can't be a, a very successful Mountain West athletic department. And I think they're a much better fit there. I've never thought they would be a fit against Pac-12 schools. I, I don't feel like they're certainly a fit then against Big 12 schools. Mm -hmm. I think it's very smart of them with the addition of Washington State and Oregon State for San Diego State and, and Boise State, by the way, to stay right where they are. Grow the footprint of that conference 
and you grow your money, you grow your prominence, and you grow your ability to compete at the top of college football and college basketball. And I think that's really the story here is that the demise of the Pac-12 has really begun this this realization or this this rationalization that by its defeat and its and its destruction, all these other confidence are gonna, uh, conferences are going to prosper. Yeah. You have the Big Twelve. I think you know, from what I understand, is going to is going to want to add the four corner schools, but they're not going to act until the Pac twelve and ESPN come apart. And we're probably underselling the lead here that the the Pac twelve and ESPN are fifty percent apart. Yeah, ESPN is not willing to break the eight hundred million dollar threshold over a five year period. Yeah, that's sixteen million dollars on average per school. That's not sustainable money. Whereas the Pac-12 is asking for $1.5 billion over a five-year span. That's $30 million a school. And one of the other major sticking points is here, no matter what dollar figure you wind up on, ESPN wants a trigger clause that says, hey, if the conference shrinks, we can cancel this agreement. Right. And the Big 12 does, or excuse me, the Pac-12 doesn't want to do that. The Pac-12 has no road forward because I think there is one other truth here. It's not if the Big Ten gets a streaming deal. It's when. Mm -hmm. And if they wind up and we're hearing that it's Apple TV, Apple TV would really like to get a part of the Big Ten streaming package. But to your point, Apple TV doesn't have a, an appetite for part of the meal. Yeah, They want all three courses, man. And I think that they're going to have to pony up for that. And I think right now, Amazon's in a place currently today where I don't think they could take on more football programming. But if they're if they don't have to start producing those games for two years, that makes it a lot more doable. Totally. So it'll be interesting to see where Amazon and Apple wind up in the Big Ten. The minute they get a streaming deal, now the pie doesn't shrink because one of the big concerns in the Big Ten is what happens if we add these four additional Pac-12 schools? If we add Oregon, Washington, Cal, and Stanford, that's going to take money out of the pocket of our other members. And our other members aren't so wanting to do that. Well, if we bring on Amazon and we add an additional hundred million dollars a year, or uh, you know, a hundred million dollars per school, right? Now we can afford that with those four schools. So if you're adding additional revenue to that deal, where every school on average gets a hundred million dollars, you're in a far better position than you were without those streaming deals. Yes. Then you can go and get those four schools out of the Pac-12. Then the Big 12 can make their move for the corner schools. Then San Diego State and Boise in the Mountain West with a new commissioner can then go and say, okay, Oregon State and Washington State, come on in. Because yeah. regionally, and I know that Washington State's done very well on television, but regionally, Pullman's a lot better fit in the Mountain West footprint than they are in the Big 12. Than they are, and I don't think Washington State, with all due respect, mm -hmm. is a fit in the Big Ten. They're a great fit in the Mountain West. I think it's a natural tie. Yeah, and, and that's why I say like all these dynamics combined with the TV viewership stats we've been showing, like that's why it's such a fascinating conversation because you know BYU against Wyoming can get you know six seven hundred thousand viewers you know views in the late window on ESPN too, like. You, some of these schools can get big time viewership, so that's why I say it's going to be really interesting to see like how it pans out and what you know, like what ultimately ends up happening with conferences like the Mountain West and ultimately what the Pac-12's fate is. I, I just don't think that you know. Again, both conferences, I don't think your future is secure yet. I, I, I think there's a long way to go, certainly for the Mountain West and and for the Pac. I just because of their arrogance. I know I keep saying that, and I've said it a bunch of times, but. It, I always come back to that. Like we go through the TV stats, like the viewership. We then go through the Big Ten and and you know streaming and like what uh, you know streaming oppor like what you know the streaming opportunity presents to these conferences. And then I look at the pack and I'm like, man, it, what would this conversation be like if the pack was just willing to say, yeah, you know what? While we do have a storied history and we've done some great things, right now we're down. Like, right now, we're not in a great place. So how can we help ourselves? If they would just say that, instead of saying, yeah, we have a storied history and we're the best things ever and, we, you know, we want a billion and a half dollars as opposed to something more appropriate in the 800 million range, you know, that's just a problem. Yep, I agree. Let's get a couple of your comments in here because there is breaking Marjorie Taylor Green news. Oh, Christ. Why? Uh, because Dude. there's one, there's a new survey out that says 70% of Americans are detached from politics. Yeah. Number, number one, number two, there's a huge Marjorie Taylor green update and you're going to actually be very happy about this. I what? would think it would excite what you. What is, um, I detest her. 
No, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm not doing. I'm not falling for your games. You will not pull me in. Uh, it could have been more than arrogance, M. Morris says. Ruff's official says the pack needs to start expanding nationally and stop focusing on the West Coast only. Josh Lovren says it's all about tournament credits. P12 has a boatload more than uh, SBMW Magazine. Come on, that's something or nothing. Uh, Joshua Taylor, 12 teams puts the Mountain West in a good position if they do not lose anyone. The Pac Sunbelt Mac and CUSA are arguably in the worst position. I think the Pac-12 is in a terrible position. Mm-hmm. I do. Zayman says, I wonder how much of that Baylor-BYU record TV rating was because of BYU. Didn't see Baylor on the views list uh, at all during the football at 50. No, because they're not. Yeah. I mean, it be, so there's, I'm saying it's not Baylor, it's BYU. There is no doubt that BYU is the is a national prize. That's why they have an ESPN deal as an independent. They you put BYU TV, BYU on TV, even on ESPN two, which by the way has a much smaller audience. Six hundred thousand people watched BYU on 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 ESPN two against Wyoming. That was that's crazy. That's a crazy yeah. number. It is. Anyway, okay, so should we talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene? Well, sure. Let's do that after we tell you about our good friends at TridayTrading.com slash Monty. Uh, TridayTrading.com slash Monty. Have you tried day trading? Do you know what day trading is? It's stocks. It's a great side hustle. It is one of the best side hustles. Jake and I actually know a ton of people the days when we were at the Yelpatory. There's a whole... And I know I think it's a thousand over a thousand deep of people that day trade at Yelp. Mm-hmm. And they have a little chat group and they all it's amazing how many of those people are not at Yelp anymore because now day trading is their full time job. You can make a legitimate living. You can make thousands and thousands of dollars a month day trading. And when you look at the results that trydaytrading.com slash Monty has. The guys at Try Day Trading are are no joke. They are for real. They have a tried and true method to teach you, coach you, and develop you into a prolific day trader so that you can be self-employed, so you don't have to work for the man anymore. That's why you just need to go to trydaytrading.com slash Monty and watch the webinar. It's free. Go there, register for the webinar and watch it, and then make a decision. Mm -hmm. If you watch that webinar and you're like, nah, I'm fine. I'm not doing this. Okay, cool. No problem. But how are you going to pass on another opportunity to make a good decision today do the right thing make the right decision see if day trading is for you and do it free with no obligation at tridaytrading.com slash monty support two local businesses triday trading is located in lehigh yes ryan and the guys have been there for over a decade they've built their business and they work with guys like us we're small business owners that's who we do business with is small business owners like triday trading Give them a shot, watch the free webinar, and make a decision for yourself because I'm telling you, it's time for you to stop grinding through, you know, side hustle after side hustle and get out of that nine to five grind. We did it. It was scary, but we jumped in. And I'm telling you, it's so rewarding. When you can take care of your family and make more money than you ever thought possible, man, it feels good. It's freeing. You're making decisions that, that, you know, and doing things that you want to do instead of stressing over how you're going to pay for groceries this week. Remember, $100,000 a year is $273 a day. And you can easily do that day trading. Tridaytrading.com yeah. slash Monty. Watch the webinar. Tell them you heard about it on the Monty Show. All right, before we get out of here, let's talk about Marjorie Taylor Green. Okay. J- Jansen says, I'm going to try day trading out so I can play, pay for college so I can earn my communications degree so I can do exactly what you guys hey, do. Man. Jansen, you should. You absolutely should. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. You find her attractive, right? No. You think she's a wonderful human? You don't? No. Well, apparently neither does her husband because Marjorie Taylor Greene's getting divorced. Mm. Her husband has filed for divorce. Now, I don't joke about divorce, but if you're married to Marjorie Taylor Greene, can you look in the mirror on a daily basis? No. And, and (laughs) And feel good about yourself. See, like to me, that's the crazy thing. Who's the guy that's like, oh, Marjorie? Hey, Marge. Hey, By the way, Marge. Well, that's the name of my 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 full length body pillow. Hey, Ask on. Mrs. Monty. Hello, Mrs. Monty. There you are. Let me turn on your microphone. Oh, Good morning. Oh, hey there. What's the name of our? What's the name of my my full body pillow? Marge. My my. Honest to God. 
He sleeps with a full body pillow because it does help hips and knees. It is like a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's huge. It's like a whole other Wait, person. I'm in sorry, our did, bed. Did, did you say it's huge? Okay. This thing that's between your legs is not your cock. Oh my wow, God. Wow, wow, <laughs> whoa. It's Mars. Easy. This is a family it's show. It's The world's largest full body pillow that takes up like another person in the bed. My so I God. Gave her a name. I gave her a name, Marge, Marjorie. Good Lord, woman. And actually, it's Marjorie Jane. It is Marjorie Jane. But. Um, what are the comments saying? I don't feel good about Marjorie Taylor Green at all. Ken says, ha, 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 And it was not related to that a-hole. It was just that, I don't know, the name came into my head, Marjorie. Um, Jansen Marge. wants to know what shirt Mrs. Monty is wearing today and how much did it cost? You know what? This one is just a black t-shirt. I woke up this morning and I was like, I don't like anything I have to wear. I want it to be colder because I'd like to wear my long sleeves, but it's still 81, so I don't want to sweat. So I was like, fine, forget it. Black T-shirt. I went with the Monty now, outfit. Let me tell you what now. By the way, um, Justin Salas says, my kids are watching the show, Mrs. Monty. My God. <laughs> it's sex education, people. I hope your kids know what parts are. Provo Cougar fan says, where can we get a body pillow? On Amazon.com. I think we got it on Amazon. I Affiliate link in the description. Yeah, it's and it, I'll tell you what. I, I have. I don't know how we got away from Marge, but anyway, the Anyways. point is, yeah. Um, sleeping with a body pillow makes a difference. Is that I, I was being serious. I hurt my knee the Tuesday before we left for Hawaii. I was Wait. playing basketball. Wait. Uh, and I hurt my knee. Yeah. Um, like I, I don't know what I did. I essentially sprained every ligament in my knee. And so I said, yeah, did some cartilage stuff. Right. Sleeping with a body pillow really helps it heal more quickly. And my back doesn't hurt. My hips don't hurt. My knees don't hurt. I'm for real. I would use a body pillow. They're great. They do take up a lot of room in the bed. And I do find myself on a regular basis, especially in the summertime, like I can't sleep with a body pillow. It's play. too hot. It's too hot. I love every single night he fights to get the blankets up over him and the body pillow. Like the body pillow is so big. It's Come on, like let's go, Schlepprock. To get the blankets over. I'm trying. Uh, Kurt Meyer says, wow, too much information. Marge is hurt. Well, that's what I'm saying. Um, Mackenzie Bezos is single again. Fat Jesus says she will be my new wife and I will become a sponsor of the show. We're all in for that. Yeah, there you go. We're wow. all in for that. You know, are they? Are, oh, Mackenzie, Mackenzie is, is, is Bezos single again. Got it. Is she? Did she? Did she break know. up with a boyfriend? I don't know. I thought that's what he said. But see, are you like again? Anyways, are, are you really moving on Jeff Bezos's former? No. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. 100%. Mm. You are. Yeah, you out of your goddamn yeah. mind. Mm -hmm. Why? Like, what is it that, like, billionaire Mackenzie, uh, oh, she, well, no, she just filed for divorce from her second husband. Wow. Are you kidding me? Philanthrop Which Philanthropist and former wife of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos married science teacher Dan Jewett last year. And she's getting divorced already? Citing court records. Oh, the New York Times reported that Scott filed for divorce from Dan Jewett in Washington State on Monday. Um, Scott divorced Bezos, one of the world's richest men, in 2019. She promised to donate her entire fortune to charity, signing on with the Giving Pledge. Scott has made sizable gifts to aid good causes, including providing affordable housing. Jewett was a science teacher at a Seattle private school to which Scott and Bezos sent their children. You were banging your kid's teacher? I hope. <laughs> describing, <laughs> describing Jewett to the Times, a friend said he was earnest and not very edgy. The perfect person to end up with this money to give away. No sense of greed at all. My oh, sounds word. like he's out now. Jewett said he was, quote, grateful for the exceptional privilege it would be to partner in giving away assets with the potential to do so much good when he shared. Wow. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know how you... But, okay, I get, see, this is the thing that I wish people understood. And I, I, this is where it's going to go, I guess, on the Marjorie, Ta Marjorie Taylor Greene got yeah. divorced. Her husband dumped her. Um, but here's the problem, right? You have to marry on your level. Mm -hmm. And... I think Mrs. Monty and I are a good example of this. We're we're pretty balanced. We're pretty equal. You know, like personality-wise, yeah. financial-wise. Like when you are Mackenzie Bezos, or excuse me, Mackenzie Bezos Jewett, you can't bang the science teacher and then marry the guy. 
he's below you. That's not yeah. going to work. Oh, shit. Damn, right? I am tripping. I mean, no, I'm being work. serious. It could work, but also, you don't have to get married. You, you think it could work. I'm, you know, I think there's always, there's all kinds of recipes there's that work. There's not rules. There's not like, rules, yeah. but I do think They're, oh. you don't have to get married. If I was Mackenzie Bezos, I would not be getting married right away. Hell the, no. But this is what I said I'm about. i But this is what I said about your mom when she got married to Bucket of Bullets. I'm telling you. <laughs> That, that that's a mistake. Like, And I don't know why this is such rocket science for people. It is black and it is white. It either is a good mix or it is not. It's either a penis-shaped rocket or it's not. That's what I'm saying. If you can't ride Jeff Bezos' penis-shaped rocket, you can't get married to that Whatever. dude. He Like Lauren Sanchez. The, and this is the problem with, with Jeff Bezos, with all due respect. That's not due to res- respect and stuff. <laughs> Jeff Bezos had nudes leaked of him because Lauren Sanchez is, I think her brother or somebody was pissed. Well. What kind of class of person has a brother that will leak nudes? The, not the kind that Jeff you Bezos. Are you are. Not the kind that Jeff Bezos should be, you know, planting a pasture in. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? You, you have to recognize you're on one level. Your partner needs to be at that level or above. Mm-hmm. I tell you this all the time. No, but I will with your wife. Personality-wise, like kids. People argue over kids all the time. They argue over money all the time. Mm-hmm. When you get married, Tom Brady and Giselle's Bunchton. Okay. Giselle wants to take her Bunchton and go home. Okay, cool. But if you're Tom Brady and you're Giselle's Bunchton, did you not have a conversation about who was going to watch the kids in your 45th <laughs> year of life when you were in the NFL still and she they wanted you have. to retire? They may have, and he might have said, okay, yeah, sure, and then he said no. I think we're making an assumption that she did something wrong. I'm not. And I, I think that you know they probably did, and she probably was like, hey, um, clock's ticking. Are we ready? Or maybe she changed her mind. People change their mind. I don't encourage anyone to get married without knowing a person for more than three to four years. I, I don't even think, see, like, and, and, I, I, and if you have to get married, cool, God. but I don't even think you have to get married. It, you don't have to. skin radio network. Yeah, new, new skin. Uh, you don't have to get married. My point is you got to marry on your level. Because I think you just you just give stuff away and where are we at in I, society I, today? You're just not going to survive, and this is why I always say if your partner is not marriage on your level, in the family is quite the topic these days. It is. I'm telling you, I I I I think I just look at it differently. I love the art of reading people. I love the art of digesting people, and and understanding their personalities and taking in their habits. And you have to do that. And I'm again a believer. If, when I sit down with you, I like you or I don't inside of probably 45 seconds. And when you're out there, and may, hey, maybe Mackenzie Bezos, and, and I know people in my life like this. Oh, we weren't having an affair. You can't tell me that when you sent your kids to that school and you were still mil- married to Jeffy Poo, that you weren't thinking about how big that guy's ruler was. Vexes I mean, me. come on now. You had to be. Terribly vexed. So then you go and marry the guy? And oh, by the way, now you're getting divorced. How much of those billions you gave away is, you know, a science teacher Jewett going to spend on new freaking isosceles triangles and stuff? So I said, yeah. Billions to buy you a lot of Texas Instruments calculators, prick. <laughs> you like? I'm hoping she had a prenup. No chance. Mommy, I'm mommy. I'm hoping she had a prenup. I don't know, man. Mm-mm. I just you don't know You can't tell me she didn't, dude. But this is, you don't have a prenup, on. you come shouldn't on. be getting married. Look I at mean, Adele. And a lot of times, honestly, a lot of states, it doesn't matter. if you. It depends on the time that you were with that person, whether or not you owe them money. It's not like there's there's no more common law kind of thing. It doesn't have wait, to be uh, that you're uh, married. Are, do prenups set you up to fail? Do you think they no. prenup? Se- I don't think they do. There's so many people, and I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. I think there's so many people. I look at Adele. Mm-hmm. Adele lost a good part of her fortune to a dude who probably sweeps floors for a living. Yeah. You don't marry floor sweepers, man. When you're Adele, you do not do that. When you are Mackenzie Bezos, you don't marry science teachers who, by the way, how are you going to explain to your kids that you're banging your, their science teacher from like eighth grade? I want to thank me for oh, having no you days him off. And now you're leaving. I mean, who knows? Who knows what this person was? I'd like, well, look, why? Why get married that soon? Because he had a nice, shiny, and sharp protractor. Like, what are you going to say to your kids on that? 
They know. I don't know. Well, obviously. All I'm saying, like, who's who's the next right husband for Marjorie Taylor Greene? I don't know, man. Who's that going to be? Like, how do you, if you're Marjorie Taylor Greene, with all due respect, and you not do much, but with all due respect, do you know the handful that Marjorie Taylor Greene probably is? Yeah. How do you, She's how do you? a little you, unstable. Man, I, 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 that decision has got to be tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just don't know how you do it. I Honestly, I don't Some know how you do it. Some other extreme conservative probably finds her hot. Fat Jesus says you and Mrs. Monty are equal. Dude, you married way up. Well, yeah. And I, 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 I mean, okay, like as a human rights activist, I married way up. As a cook, I married way down. Uh, you know. Correct the mundo. Fat Jesus. Just don't, don't start trouble. I would probably vote for you for mayor. So don't start. Wow. Trying. Here we go. Damn. Uh, I need a shirt. Fat Kurt, Jesus for mayor. Are you going to make those shirts? You maybe. should send me a shirt. Maybe you should. Kurt Meyer says you can marry more money in five minutes than you can earn in a lifetime on day trading. Hey. Hey, oh, true. Uh, Fat Jesus says if I'm the mayor of the Monty show, that makes me Mackenzie Bezos is equal. Well, you are a politician at that point, you know. Uh, I think Tom really wants the undefeated season. He'll probably try again for it. People have said that. Tom Brady. Yeah. He's obsessed. But if it costs you G- Giselle's Bunchton, are you really doing not that? Worth it. I'm not. You're not 45 worth it. years old. Like, man. Come on, guy. You can call the ball, I mean, man. Yeah, at some point. At some point. Tom Basuda says, very judgy of you, Monty. 45 seconds. Come on, man. You know, do, do you ever just sit down with somebody and you get a, a good or a bad vibe like, vibe like right away? Well, yeah, but that doesn't but, mean you know them. Yeah, that no, doesn't. No, no, but you you're making very, a decision. Like, yeah, you are very judgy. Like, you know, like uh, there's some people in our family that like, you know, they're not bad people. They're just different people. And it takes you a super long time to give them a chance. I'm not. I'm not. Because they're just I, not like I, on your level. Listen, I don't disagree. I don't give I don't give people um, a chance. I, I if I don't like you, it's going to take a lot for me to overcome that. That's that's if, what and, we're saying. And that's just in my personal life, right? Like I, I'm a big believer that you treat everyone you meet like they're gold. And but if I'm dating you and I don't like you in the first five minutes, we're probably not having a second date. Well, that's different. Than right? That's dating. different, yeah. right? No, but that's what I'm talking. That's what we're ultimately talking about here. If I sit down with you and you are a love interest, Mackenzie Bezos, and I don't know anything about you, the problem is Mackenzie Bezos is a dollar sign now. She's not Mackenzie Bezos, the philanthropist. She's not, oh, man, she loves nature and traveling. Unless you're her equal. Unless well, you're also a philanthropist. But Unless isn't that what I'm saying? the same kind of thing, then you could... You can remove those things and see her for who she is. And it's the this is the Bill and Melinda Gates thing. Mm-hmm. Good luck, Bill Gates, finding somebody on your level now that you cheated on your wife with a, an employee, allegedly, at Microsoft, and she dumped you. Yeah. like I love Melinda Gates. She's amazing Well, for women. She is. I agree. But if you're Bill Gates, how are you going to find another? It, and I look at all the powerful people. I look at all the guys. Again... All these guys that fall at the feet of sex. I look at Ime Yudoko, the co- Ime Yudoka, the coach of the Celtics. Yeah, you're never going to be the same guy. Melinda Gates, you're never going to be the same. Mackenzie Bezos, you're never going to be the same. Adele's never going to be the same. If you're somebody like Adele and you got tortured and divorced by a commoner, how are you ever going to trust any man ever again? You're not. You're not. And I it's would have because some fun and play the field and pay a really good security guard. I think she's married again. I want to say Adele's engaged again. Probably. I don't know. Like, I, it just it just kills me. I, I think me. it's yeah, it's yeah. The the dynamic of money like is just yeah, it's a powerful one, you know. Yeah, it's crippling to relationships. Money absolutely defines relationships. And I think if if you are, you know, and in this day and age because of the pandemic, I mean, you're you have so many more stay-at-home dads. I think the family structure has completely changed through the pandemic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you're both working and and he is making way more than you or she's making way more than you, that's always going to be in somebody's back of somebody's mind. I guess. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, I, it, yeah. I, you could do a whole show on people's relationships with money and, you know, the the scarcity mindset versus the, you know, the abundance mindset and all would that. You, but. Would you be comfortable if your girlfriend was making, if your wife was making a hundy and you're making $30,000? 
No, I mean, I definitely, I mean, obviously for personal reasons, you wouldn't want to be in that position, but I, I think that it, you know, I don't know. It's guy to guy. Like I'm sure there are yeah. guys out there that are fine with it. Yeah. I mean, there hasn't been too many times I think in our relationship where Mrs. Monty's made more than me, but the times that it has, it drives me crazy. I mean, I, I don't know why I'm probably a weirdo like that. I just feel I'm a, I'm an alpha. I want to be a provider. Like, I don't know why that bothers me so much. But yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, there's, there's a lot within that. There's a, the, it's a big, big conversation, but there's I think some therapy that, you probably need, but I mean, it's fine. Why do I need, the, I'm just, that's not, you're not funny. You're not funny. <laughs> Can I tell everybody a funny story no. really quick? No, you can't. Two minutes. So every night we take, um, liquid carnitine, right? It's yeah. a fat burner. Helps. Max muscle, South Jordan. Yeah. Use the promo code Monty 15. Monty 15. And, um, it used to be that I always forgot, and now I've gotten the habit of taking it. So I go to take it, and then I say, hey, hey, babe, have you taken yours? No. And he likes to fuck around. I give... Uh -oh. <laughs> what? What? Where is this I, going? I fill up the lid, and I hand it to him, and he grabs it, and he goes... Well, it's just... It's a cap... Liquid carnitine is a clear he liquid. he chokes, and then... Bits the entire. Oh, you knew okay, this was wait gonna a come up. Wait you a knew this okay. was gonna come up. It was hilarious. It happened. <laughs> what? No, it wasn't. Don't play that laugh. It do not do not encourage her. Do not feed the animals. The point is, it happened one time the other night. I was being an idiot. It, yeah, it was so funny. So we we <laughs> so we do take liquid carnitine every night before we go to bed. Yeah. I take it twice a day when I get up and when I go to bed. And so she handed me this cap full, and my hands were full. And so I, I was <laughs> no. being an idiot. He was being a goofball. And so I, I tried to like do the <laughs> out of the thing. And I actually sucked it into my lungs. And yeah, then I spit it wow. all out over your face. You know, <laughs> wow. It out everywhere. It I was on, sucked it into my lungs. <laughs> yeah, I did. And then never mind. It I was uncomfortable. More. It was on the microwave. It was on the floor. <laughs> it was on the <laughs> counter. Bro. My face got a good amount. So, Stop. anyways, it was why do you do this you just every can't help day? Yourself. Every day, every day you come um, down here and people are like, "Oh, what's? Could you wear a um, white shirt again tomorrow?" Um, um, <laughs> Candy Lopes. Um, like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> it was the funniest thing. It just made me think of it because I was sipping my coffee. Uh, Ken Williams says, "My wife makes more than me. I don't care." Okay. Uh, Monty's epitaph on his tombstone. Epitaph is a real word. Yep. I can't read. Monty's epitaph on his tombstone. I was being an idiot. Love it. <laughs> Truth. Kurt Myers says, uh, and what does he do with the toilet seat? Worlds have changed over this dispute. Oh, just, uh, see, I think it's complete bias that the toilet seat has to be down. I, I think it's ridiculous. No. You Why know can't I leave it up? How come you can't put it up for me? We don't have time to talk about this today. Make sure that you uh, find Mrs. Monty on Twitter. We don't have time to talk about it. At Mrs. Monty Show, M O N T Y, at Mrs. Monty Show on Twitter. The Monty Show on a daily basis is presented by the Advocates, UtahAdvocates.com. You didn't deserve to be in an accident. You do deserve somebody to fight for you. You do deserve somebody to get every penny that you have coming to you from those dastardly insurance companies. UtahAdvocates.com, no upfront costs. You only pay the advocates when they win your case at utahadvocates.com. Until tomorrow, say seats are down, Monty. Somebody? Seats are down, Monty. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.